Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Big Buck Hunter World Championship. This is the 14th annual tournament. My name is Paul Lott, joined alongside Callum Omar to my left, and we are going to be your broadcast team for the live stream of the Big Buck Hunter World Championship all weekend long. Gentlemen, I got to bring it to y'all, and I got to intro you in. Callum, the former community manager for Big Buck, he's been doing this every year for six years. How you feeling today, man? I'm feeling good. It's been a minute since we've been here because of, of obviously, everything happening in the world, so it feels good to be back. I'm super excited excited. Bracket looks stacked. We're going to have a hell of a weekend. It's going to be a great time. As you can tell by what's on desk right here, we're going to have a very, very <laughs> good time. To my left, we've got none other than the legend himself, CNN correspondent by day, Big Buck Hunter interviewer by night. Omar, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Honestly, I am looking forward to It's going to be a whole new set of shoes. I'm going to be down there asking them the tough questions, of course. That's what I like to hear. See what That's you what guys you are talking about and putting them on the spot. It's I like gonna it. It's going to be a really fun one. You're going to be talking politics. You're going to be oh, talking yeah, all of it. religion. All of it. Really just grilling them. Yeah. Yeah. I understand they're, they're political. Beliefs. The it's demographics of that last adventure. Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But jokes aside, Omar's been doing this for a while as well. So much so that he made sure he's here every single year despite his day job being a little bit busy. So we're Wouldn't grateful to have you here, man. Wouldn't miss him. I love it. Absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First things first, tournament explainer. Callum, walk me through the tournament. How's it going to work today? Yeah. You know, we have uh, a completely stacked weekend. It's uh, never been done before in the Big Buck Hunter world, right? So uh, in the past, we've typically done a ladies' championship and a men's championship, or sorry, not a men's championship, a complete championship. Uh, this year, both brackets combined into one. So we have just one world championship over 100 players. They're going to be playing one full trek throughout the entirety of the bracket down to the championship match. At that point, they're playing a full adventure. I love it. Double elimination tournament, so if you lose once, you're not out, right, Cal? Absolutely. Always go down to that reload bracket. You'd love to hear it. Of course, in addition to the reload bracket, whoever gets to the grand finals, well, they'll have a chance to win a chunk of the $100,000 prize pool right. for a big buck roll hunter championship. That's bigger than most traditional esports prize pools, Omar. Oh, yeah. I mean, every year when you look at that prize pool, it makes me question why I'm sitting up here with you guys <laughs> and not focusing on my big buck game. And this year's no different. That's so true. I, I've said it a few times. Whenever I tell people about this tournament and I, I explain them, they go, how much do people win doing this? And I'm like, well, the first place prize is 20K. And they're like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> Sorry. They can make how much money playing Big Buck Hunter? <laughs> Insane. All from coming from their local bars, by the way, yep. playing oh with gosh. a beer in their hand and having a good time, <laughs> yep. which is just absolutely insane. Of course, that's a $23,000 first place prize, as Callum said. $10,000 for second place, $8,000 for third, $6,000 for fourth. That, of course, goes all the way down to, I believe every player has paid at least $75, right? Everyone takes home something. That's awesome. Everyone takes home something. So you got your drinking money for the weekend, <laughs> basically what that means. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you love to see it. So a significant prize pool, double elimination tournament, as you'd expect in traditional East Sports, but this isn't traditional, Cal. Nope. We also have some divisions here. Talk yep. about the, the two divisions we have today. Yep, so uh, entering into this year's uh, competition with a little bit of change, we're going to see the ladies' division and the rookies' division. So uh, we've already talked about it. It's one full bracket. The top ladies will earn their own set of cash, and then the top rookies will earn their own set of cash. And that's a really cool feature, especially this year when the bracket has so many new faces. Yeah, I know. I want to get your take on that. The past Friday nights are usually insane with females screaming very, very loud, <laughs> getting hyped. A little different this time around. What are your thoughts on the new format? I love the new format. Personally, being able to expand it, I think, just creates so much more excitement. And everyone, at the end of the day, everyone wants to play more. Everyone wants to see more. And so I think we're going to get that. And I think with the longer tournament, we might see some upsets that we didn't see if you know, you're not on your game for a longer period of time, you're out. So that's something I think is going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, we were, we were talking to a couple of players earlier, and they were saying, hey, I might actually take it easy tonight, which is yeah. usually does not happen on Friday nights <laughs> yep. at the Big Buck World Championship, <laughs> nope. because they got to compete tomorrow, right, Cal? Yeah, well, so it's, it's funny, because you, you, you will often see a lot of these people will come in and be like, hey, Thursday's the pre-party, but Friday we're going hard. You know, <laughs> we're we're going to party it up, because we don't play tonight. Yep. And now, obviously, they all do. So not only could you see some of those uh, top players going into the reload bracket early on a Friday night, but you're also going to see those players who do well on Friday ride that momentum into Saturday. So a lot of these rookies have a lot of good opportunity to kind of shake off those jitters on day one. That's a good point. We'll see what they can do. We got the rookies, we got the course the ladies division, and of course we got the main tournament, the twenty thousand dollar first place prize, which is insane. But let's go ahead and jump right into the players, our predictions, analysis. Or I want to start with you. You've been doing this for a few years now. You've had a chance to get to know a few of these players. <laughs> who are some players that stick out to you, whether it's by personality or skill? So there's one person in particular. I've called him out before because I think every year he 
gets better, and that is number three seed Federico Reed. Every year yep. he comes in and he impresses me with his longevity, with his competitive spirit, and every time he leaves, he's I just have a feeling he's going to come back better. So that's one. And then, of course, you got to think about Trevor Gardner, who is the most decorated big buck champion Multi -champion. of all time. And he's coming in here, and he didn't win last year or two years ago, whenever we had this last. And <laughs> yeah. you got to think he is hungry for that. Because I don't know if you guys have ever been around Trevor. He's a very competitive person. Sure. And I saw that look in his eyes earlier when he was chilling at one of the tables. He wants this. I love it. I love Cal. How about you? So, so I want to I want to highlight one of those like Federico, right? Like yeah. there is no one in this community oh that gosh. knows the game, like the the <laughs> technical side of it, better. What type of details are we talking um, about? I, I mean, this kid can name animals from games that came out ten yep. years ago, oh right? Like, and he and he knows the music. He knows everything about this game. And you're absolutely right. Like he does get better and better and better. Uh, Trevor Gardner, obviously a terrifying competitor to go up against. Uh, we've saw. Uh, Andre Rivas, right? Last time Defending we did champ. this. Uh, Chris, champ. Chris yeah. Freem typically performs consistently. Uh, we were talking to Melissa Romanek earlier, who, who placed first place in the ladies tournament, and then the next year, double elimination out of the first two rounds, right? Yeah. So it's one of these things that anything can happen. I'm really eager to see the Melinda and Sarah rival. Because in the past, in the ladies tournament, we've seen Sarah, Melinda, Sarah, Melinda, Sarah, Melinda. Dating back to like 2009. Right, 2010. It, it, it's always back to back, right? But now they're just in the bracket with everybody else. So, like, are they going to hang tight? How's Lauren Hope going to do, right? She performed exceptionally well last year. So I'm most eager to see how these ladies kick ass and take names throughout this weekend. Damn awesome. straight. Oh, my gosh. They, and they will. Lauren Hope, by the way, her and Drew Baldock, both representing Saskatchewan, Regina. Oh, which by the way. Regina, we, we've got, they gave us, I was going to say, you've got to show it. They gave us these explainers for how to pronounce right. every part of Canada correctly. That's right. We, we butchered it. We butchered it so much two years ago that they literally came in and said, we made you these, and it has maps Phonetic on spelling. it. Phonetic it spelling. Phonetic spelling. Saskatchewan, <laughs> in case you need help for this time, boys. And also, even even down to the city they live in, which is Regina, yep. which rhymes with something else that is fun, according on the According on to our side. note card. We're just quoting the note cards. That, that is, just that is the on the note card. Yeah. <laughs> Literally on the note card. <laughs> the city that rhymes with fun in Saskatchewan, <laughs> it, Canada, it, the I, province. I, and that's, I think, one of the cool things about this event is, is it attracts so many people. So we have, obviously, I'm, I'm hoping the Australians are probably watching and yeah. tuning in. I don't know. It's like 3 in the morning for them. Uh, <laughs> They'll be up. That's going to be interesting, too, because they performed super well last year. Obviously, you've got, like, Mark Santander. You've got Will Bromley. Like, there's a lot of names in the Canadian scene that perform pretty high yeah. and place high in the bracket. They're all gone. So we've got an influx of rookies. We've got the ladies competing in the same tournament on the same days. You got more people. You've got more people. We got yeah. over 100 competitors today, and the Aussies are gone. Like, I genuinely have no clue what is going to happen this Wild weekend. card. And by Absolutely. the way, just confirmed, it is 10 a.m. on Saturday okay, so in Australia. Yeah. So our, the Australian community is watching right that, now. Big shout out to y'all. We wish you could be here. That's about the time they start drinking. I know. I was about to say, I was going to say, oh, they're waking up with the coffee and watching. They're probably waking up with the beer. Yeah, and yeah, watching. If, we, if we know the Australians as well as we do. Yeah, If, if I don't start getting messages from the Australians with them, like, drinking beers, watching the stream, I'm going to be so mad. In fact, in particular, <laughs> I want a video of one of the Aussie fans doing a shooey. Please yeah. <laughs> tweet at us at Fallout with two T's, at Flizzy Fletch. Your official Twitter is Omar. Uh, at Omar Jimenez. That's it. Yep. Omar That's Jimenez. It. We want to see a video of y'all doing some shoeys out there. Big <laughs> shot to the Australians. We wish the Aussies can be here. We're wishing you the best in lockdown, obviously, as we now have some gameplay on screen here. Count's freaking out. Why are you freaking out, buddy? Because that's Sarah and Melinda in round one. Oh, no way. Am I right? Is that Sarah and no Melinda shot. on round one on game number three? We're sure this I isn't a warm up. I don't. Oh, it's Sarah Abernathy. I saw Sarah and I saw the <laughs> hair. So in my mind, I'm like, that's Sarah, that's Melinda. Holy smokes in round number one. But I, I lied. It's, it's a different Sarah. But nonetheless, super exciting. Omar is going to be heading down to the floor for some interviews. Omar, it's a pleasure having you, buddy. Always a pleasure, guys. I'll catch you later. Sounds good, brother. Thanks for joining us. And here we go. Gameplay is going to be starting here. We almost had a panic attack thinking seeds <laughs> out the window, by the I way. I genuinely like, think my like watch is triggering. Like, your heart <laughs> is pounding right now. Too funny. I'm like, this is a seeded tournament, right? There's there's a skill base here. We shouldn't see these type of things around one. Good things we good thing we don't. But we have gameplay on screen. Ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time, we're jumping into gameplay here. It is the Big Buck World Championships. Let's kick it off with the ladies. And this is... Is, this is cool. I've actually not seen this feature before. So this is, is a, a new element to the game. But when you fire, you actually see the tracers coming Love out it. of the gun. Uh, that, that's super cool because it's, it's, it's challenging as a spectator at home to be able to see where these bullets are hitting, right? Yeah. So seeing these tracers kind of highlights that. This is all about speed, John. 
Yes, right, right. As I learned earlier playing you one on one, I learned about the speed. Trust me. So, so you, you've been diving into the world of Big Buck Hunter recently. Absolutely. Talk to me the difference between solos and duos, right? Playing on your own versus playing head to head versus, yeah, night and day, right? In, in, in solo play. So, you know, recently I've been diving in, but let me tell you, I'm a, I'm a tried and true big buck hunter myself. <laughs> I uh, used to dominate the local Yorktown Mall high scores on Big Buck Hunter, but that was that was solo, that was casual play. And you have, you could take your time, you could be accurate. When it comes to versus head to head, look at what we're seeing right now. We see a 6-0 sweep right now from Melinda V over Sabra. That is the level of competition you see. You have to be quick, it's all about speed here in versus. Sarah is, uh, I hate to say unlucky, you know. <laughs> Melinda's not someone, there's there's a handful of people you don't want to run into into the first round of the tournament, right? Melinda, you don't want to run into Federico, you don't want to run into Andre Rivas, Rogelio, Trevor, Chris, like this, there's a list of them, right? Exactly. And, and the interesting thing about qualifying into this tournament is you're not necessarily qualifying in one to one with your skill level, right? So Trevor Gardner, arguably the consistent number one seed, I think he's seeded somewhere around like 17 tonight, right? So that kind of creates an interesting twist in the brackets. If you're coming in and you're the number, I don't know, 84th seed or whatever would be playing the 17th seed in this, you're not really playing the 17th best player you're at the tournament. You're playing the multi-champion. Yeah. <laughs> one of these four or five championships in the past. Exactly. Oh, almost $100,000 to prize pool, Trevor Gardner. Yeah, you're spot on. And that's exactly what's happening to Sarah, right? Is, is, is Sarah, Sabra, Sabra, sorry. Sabra, I apologize, but that's exactly what's happening to Sabra. She's coming in and saying, ah, this is all right. It's not going to be uh, an easy matchup. Or not necessarily easy, but a good matchup round one. And she's putting up a fight here. We're going to have an even 3-3 three, three split. And again, it all comes down to distance. So for those that are new to the Big Buck Hunter world, you get a score for each buck that you take out based on two factors, distance and size of the buck. Those are the important factors. And of course, you can get three bucks. It doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to get just as much of a score based on those two factors. Right. And so it's important to note, because this is two versus two, there are six bucks or rams, uh, bulls on, on the screen uh, during any given site. So the way that this breaks down is you have a site, a trek, and then an adventure. The site is the singular site that you're watching with the animals coming out. The trek is a, a set of sites with a bonus game. And then the adventure is obviously a, a full three treks and three bonus games. So what you're seeing in these rounds is one trek. It's a couple of sites, a bonus game, and that's it. And then we also see, speaking of bonus games, we got a little Pirates of the Caribbean action. This is a, a, you know, you're actually mobile in this game. You're flying from different sides of the pirate ship. This is one of the more fun bonus games for sure. And right now, Melinda has the lead 15 to 8. Count, talk to me about bonus games and their importance, though, I think a few years ago, some changes were made. Yeah, so a couple of years ago, what was happening was people were realizing that the bonus games weren't as impactful as they should be, right? Uh, if you have the lead in the game and you go into the bonus game, you're probably going to win the game. Or at the very least, if you break even, no impact on the score overall. So what they did is they turned around and added 2.5 multiplayer. I heart the Aussies. I heart Aussies. I love it. Uh, but they added a, a 2x or 2.5x multiplier on the bonus game. So now you can quite literally make or break based on the bonus game alone. And I promise you, throughout the day, we will see people losing and winning based explicitly on the bonus game. Insanity, which never used to be the case a few years ago. And in your opinion, healthy change for the game? I love it. I think the players do too, because again, if, if, if it's neck and neck, it really gives you that opportunity. I would say that it is uh, a stressful 20 seconds when you're, when you're sitting there going, is that enough? Yeah. And then you're seeing the scores add up. I mean, you experienced it earlier, right? Like, as the scores start to add up, is it enough to just put you over the edge? And we've literally seen bonus games be decided by, or, uh, sorry, uh, Trek scores be decided by 50 points. It's crazy. 20 points, yeah. one point. I mean, it is, it's, it's tough. It's a big difference. You see, speaking of Trevor Gardner himself, we see him on screen here. Typically, the whole Wisconsin crew, his crew comes out in big waves. This time, we heard there were some babies that were born. So yep. congratulations to the newborns and the Gardner family. As we know, uh, there's a few folks from his hunting crew out here today. But uh, good to see Trevor every single year. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because you, you see pockets all around the country of incredibly talented players, right? So you have Minneapolis, you have New York, you have San Francisco. Hot uh, zones almost. Hot yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's because these players get together at these bars and then they train against each other, right? And then they start coming to these competitions and realizing like, hey, we can make some serious cash here. Let's get a squad together and train against each other, right? And so it's fun because you'll start to see these players go against each other at the bracket. 
you see them all with beers in hand. So by, by 10 o'clock tonight, when we're in winner's round four, like a couple of these players might be stumbling their way upstairs. May or may not be sloshed on stage. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. This is why this event is one of the most unique events in all of gaming, by the way. And I am just honored to be here. I've been to uh, hundreds of esports events or gaming events in my career. And this is hands down the most unique as we see our host, Jared, on the stage as well. And speaking of making big bucks, making a lot of money in the local scene, we'll talk about a few things. We'll talk about the in-game tournament system in a little bit. But first things first, I want to give a massive shout out to Skills, the presenting sponsor of this event. Of course, the amazing partnership, the entire Big Buck Hunter Marksman platform, the mobile game, is actually powered by Skills as a platform, which is awesome. And I will say, as a competitive gamer whose roots is in competitive gaming, I freaking love what Skills brings to the table. In-game tournaments, in-game systems, a lot of awesome things. We'll, of course, have more to say about that, but a big thank you to our presenting sponsor in Skills. As we take a look at the first match in the leaderboard here, Cal, walk me through it. Yeah, so Valentin Reedman versus Nathan Robinson. Valentin Reedman comes out on top. These are two names that I'm not too, too familiar with. Melinda, Melinda Van Humison obviously locked it down uh, as as expected. We've got some exciting matches coming up next round. We actually have Julianne Jones going up against Sarah Erlinson. So that's going to be the one we're going to start on, of course. Love uh, Julianne Jones, one half of PB&J. And then we have Sarah <laughs> Erlinson, who is uh, one of the most fierce competitors on the ladies' side. But Decorated. we've seen her be upset before. So I, I think this is a, it's comfortable and safe to say genuinely this could go either way. There These are go. two fierce players. And here we're going to jump right into it. We don't take breaks here, all right? This yeah. is the Big Buck World Championship. I'm like, Callum, hey, so is it a typical show flow? You know, we throw to an analyst desk and then back to the cat. He's like, no, we do it all and we just keep going. I'm, like, I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> this weekend does not stop. <laughs> Julianne Jones, though, starts out strong, wow. picks up her first and second. Sarah struggling to get something wow. over there. They both opt no critters. To hell with the critters. We're focusing on the animals. And they focus. do pretty. I mean, that's three miss. Round, yeah. That's a shaky round. Three miss and no critters consumed. Yeah, well, you know, first round, keep in mind, you know, obviously some early first round jitters that you see, and they're just laughing their asses off on screen right now, as you see. They're like, that was embarrassing. We're <laughs> this, on live stream, <laughs> and we they, just missed three bucks. I promise you that's exactly what's going through their head. <laughs> like, there's no doubt in my mind that Sarah's sitting there going, it's Sarah and Julianne. Of course we're on live stream, and we just missed half of the animals up here. Like, what is going on? It's hilarious. Sarah Erlinson, the winner of the 2012 tournament, missing shots today, but that's going to change here. Can Julianne and Sarah going to split one for one here to start? Sarah picks up a second. Julianne fires back with one of her own, though. The deep shots. A lot of misses, but Sarah does pick it up. The one important difference here I want to call out, actually, the tracer you see, it's because it's a bow. That's obviously a new component of the gameplay here today. Count, walk me through the bow and then see how that uh, is obviously a different. Maker. Yeah, so so that was a, a new addition last year to Big Buck Hunter Reloaded. Uh, they added a bow. It's uh, bow hunting, right? I mean, you've already got the the iconic gun game. Everyone, you say, hey, you know Big Buck Hunter? They go, is that the game in the bar with the shotguns? Everyone knows Big Buck Hunter. Now you can hunt with a bow. It adds a new element. It's a little more challenging. You need your shots a little more, and then it changes the way the game is played. Love it. Jumping back into it. Close game oh so far, but this is the turnaround here. Sarah connects for four bucks here, and she already had the lead by about double. That's just going to continue to run here as Sarah takes the lead. And those shots were deep. That's why the scores gets racked up so much, and it adds up so quickly. I mean, we just saw the score differential go from like 500 to three or 4,000 in just a matter of a sight or two. I mean, those deep shots really do just set it apart. Yeah, and for those of you who are just tuning in, we explained it earlier. Walk us through that again. How does the point system work? Yep, so the further the shot, the bigger the animal, the better your points are going to be. So when you see these hunters getting these animals all the way in the back, that's money. And what you'll also see is when players go out, you'll occasionally see them take their time and just wait it out because they, they know hey, that animal is going to go further and further and further and further they're going to rack up more and more points. That's right. You can see the accuracy difference here. 20 percent accuracy for Sarah versus 9 percent for Julianne. But she put up a fight. Off, uh, started off really, really strong in site number one. We're going to continue to roll here. But Sarah is rolling as expected. Fourth place in the World Championships overall tournament, by the way. Won the ladies tournament a few times from Belleville, Wisconsin. A bar owner. She goes by Big Buck Girl. I touched passion she is about this scene. So you're going to love this. Uh, something we haven't talked about yet. Uh, Sarah Erlinson and Jared Erlinson. Uh, at Clyde's Corner, their bar up in Wisconsin, they do the world's biggest beer bong. No way. Uh, look is it up. Is it actually the world's biggest look beer bong? Look it up. No, for it, Look it up. It is Cal hundreds. Are we, are we road tripping up this to Belleville, Wisconsin? This is hundreds of hundreds of people what? with kegs and kegs. I think, I want to say it was like 20-something kegs last time they did it. Oh and and they quite literally have like PVC pipes for like hundreds of feet 
and then they have all of the community will come out and they have hoses that come down and everyone gets their own pipe and they quite literally have the world's biggest beer bong. You gotta be kidding I'm me. I'm not joking. That's you. awesome. All right, well, that's a fun fact. If you like obscure, <laughs> obscure things, I think there's a Netflix movie about people that go and visit obscure places. This is one of them. Go to Beltonville, Wisconsin. Go to Clyde's Corner. That is, of course, Sarah Errol Erlinson's bar alongside Jared. Here we go. We're back in the bonus game. Julianne actually faring very, very well in this bonus game here. 12, make it 13 to 9. Yeah, the challenge that she's dealing with, though, is she's down five or 6,000 points, right? It, this isn't going to be enough yeah. to bring back the score. But we do have, an, on game number two, this is a big highlight for John and I. We were talking to Melissa Romanek earlier on in the night, and she said, we said, how are you going to do this weekend? What's your goal? She said, I just want to win around. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just want to win around. And John and I are sitting here like, didn't you Excuse win me? like two years ago? <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, I won two years ago, and then I lost immediately in the next tournament, right? She was like doubly limbed out. And, uh, I mean, she's... She's up by 3,000. Right, that's a good start. Let's we'll see what Alyssa can do. Game number two, if we can jump over in time, I think it's still going on. They're in the bonus game right now. That'd be great. We'd love to jump into date game two for a moment, though I have to congratulate Sarah Erlinson for moving on to the winner's bracket round two. Meanwhile, Julianne will go down part of the PB&J crew. We'll go down to the reload bracket and have a chance to continue competing. And keep in mind, no one's getting eliminated today. That's the cool part. Everyone still has something to play for tomorrow, which means there, of course, is going to be no uh, reload bracket matches today. So those players will have a chance to just watch and enjoy their night, I guess. And the other really cool thing to note that we haven't touched on yet, big, she won. She we're won. Good. We're good. There she we're won good. Melissa, Melissa. We're proud of you. Congratulations. Congratulations. The one match she wanted to win. So she's done. She she's can done. Playing. She can check out. She can, <laughs> she can go to the bar, use up her drink tickets, have a good That's night. Uh, the, but the thing we weren't talking about, on BigBuckHunter.com, if you go to BigBuckHunter.com right now or any point throughout the weekend, you can actually watch any of the games that are happening on stage. So if we're not showing the match that you're interested in, if you've got a family member, a loved one, a friend, your grandmother's in the competition, whatever, BigBuckHunter.com, and you can tune into any of the five games on stage. Yep, I love it. I was going to bring up the same thing. Nailed it. And that, honestly, that's important because that's some feedback we heard from last competitions, right? We want to, hey, we like the match you see on stream. We get it, but we want to watch our, our friends, our family compete. You have a chance to do that now. Any of the five matches on stage. We'll try and keep you updated as to who's playing uh, on the mainstream here. But again, go to BigBuckHunter.com. There's actually five different Twitch streams. They're all running at the same time. Big Buck Hunter, big shot to the Big Buck team and Play Mechanics for putting this together. They actually coded a, a multi-view type of experience on BigBuckHunter.com. Which is great. So walk us through who's playing right now. Those that are wondering. Before we go into the next round, I think they're calling out rounds and players. Oh, they are. I do want to send it to Omar. I know he's got an interview on the floor with Sarah Erlinson. I just wanted to get it started on the right foot. Sarah, we saw you up there. We were, we were, we didn't know how kind of first round jitters you were gonna have. That first set of shots looked a little shaky, but then you came out and destroyed. How, how are you feeling right now? Well, I guess. I mean, I haven't played in a few years because I'm a new mom, you know, I have a two-year-old. I could, I don't have the time to practice anymore, and I haven't played the bow very much, and that was my first two rounds. And once that gun came around, it, it was like muscle memory, like I had it. I knew, I knew I could do this. And now, competing as a new mom, does that add any element? Should people here be more nervous about you now that you're a new mom? This is an important question. Well, I think they should have never stopped being nervous about me. Even though, you know, I haven't played in a few years, like that skill just doesn't go away. And that drive to win doesn't go away. So I think they should be nervous. All right. They should be nervous. Sarah, best of luck to you. I'll see you around. But that is the quote. Send it to all the other competitors. You should be nervous, Sarah. Thank you guys. Thanks so much, Omar. Drop the mic, putting on the gauntlet here is Sarah, isn't she? Sarah's a competitor, and like to, you heard her first bow rounds, and she came in, she got, and, and like Julianne's not a, that's not a small competitor, right? Yeah. Like to to brush the dust off and brush the dust off against one of the other best female competitors at this tournament, like, and then still win. Y'all should be scared. Y'all men, <laughs> yeah. men in this competition. I'm yeah, just saying. seriously. She talked about muscle memory as well. It sounds like she hasn't been competing too much. She's probably been busy with motherly duties. But, yep. you know, they say there's, like, dad strength when you go to the gym as a father. Adam Apicella, you know, Adam, yep. a -A -A Maybe there's, like, woman's big buck hunter mother strength. It's just that motherly energy. Motherly energy. That I mean, Melinda's got kids, too. That facts. It's Is it a coincidence? I don't know. I think not. I don't I know. I think not. Our mothers are so far 2-0 in this tournament. That's so, so we do have uh, on stage Andrew Moskowitz going up against Heidi. So this is another exciting matchup because this is two of the OG New York crew, right? So Heidi's, uh, I think, a newer player, but Andrew 
from New York originally, moved out to San Francisco. Now he's in New Jersey. He's all over the place. Uh, but this is what we're talking about. Like, this is such a tight knit community that at some point you're gonna play your friends, and it's either you go home or they do. But it's kind of sad. It's like, do I want to kick? Do I want to knock this person out of this tournament? You know. But at the end of the day, with hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> that's, that's what I was gonna say. You Look, really John. With all due respect, I've known you for fifteen years, <laughs> but if someone offers me twenty k, I'm sending your ass home. Absolute facts. <laughs> exactly. Being around the stage, we're actually might start, might start throwing bows yep. in real life. It's yep. gone. Something might start happening. But no jokes aside, we got gameplay starting here. We got a Heidi chant going on right now. So there's some Heidi fans here. We'll see if we can pull off. There's one. We got another. That's currently off to a slow start. Gonna finally connect for a buck. Also pick up some critters. That's not a critter, that's a full-blown ancient animal there. As now it's gonna be a great start for Andrew. Heidi with 866 points, but Andrew just connects for great shots from a distance count. Yeah, and Andrew like comes out strong. You know, that's it's one of those things where it's it can go either way. If your opponent does out, Andrew Moskowitz, if he does out here, Heidi comes right back, right? As long as she slows it down and plays her game. So at the end of the day, this isn't a situation where Heidi's out yet, but when you're down 6,000 points after two rounds, same. you're starting to sweat a little bit. Now, we've obviously both played for years and years and years, John. How do you stay above water, right? When you're down 6,000, when you're down a round or two, like, what do you do to get back into it? Yeah, it's tough to do. But at that point, honestly, the biggest best advice I ever got was actually from Gandhi, former professional Halo player. He said, you got to just envision yourself succeeding. Try to envision yourself playing like you normally do, games you normally play, try to get back in that rhythm. Obviously a tough thing to do, easier said than done when you're down that far, but you also gotta start taking a little more risks, especially in a game like Big Buck. You gotta start going for shots. Even if it's a little close to a doe, you're scared of doing out, but you have to, at some point, take those risks. And that's the, the, the hard part, because a game like this is so unforgiving, right? We talked about the fact that it is speed over, I don't wanna say accuracy, yep. but speed is definitely the most important element here. And you'll see different strategies, right? So you'll see people waiting for shots, right? If I'm Heidi, I'm gonna wait for Andrew Moskowitz to fire once or twice, and then I'm gonna put that third shot on, right? Or you're gonna see them wait for the deeper shots, or you're gonna see them uh, try to bait out shots, right? I'm gonna fire over here to make you think that there's something over here, so you're gonna fire over here, right? Yep. And maybe you go out on that, and then you get, hey, I'm gonna take my time, but like, this is 10,000 points difference, like, yeah. That's exactly right. Not a whole lot you can do in this scenario. We're obviously giving our energy to Heidi if we can. A jeweler, an entrepreneur from Brooklyn, New York, part of the Too Drunk to Buck hunting party. Shot to y'all if you're watching from home and competes at the Four Faced Liar in New York City. Meanwhile, we got Andrew, clearly proven that New Jersey is better than New York, which is definitely not <laughs> true at all. So it's, it's fun because what you'll start to see throughout this tournament is these, these hunting crews and the bars they play at more and more, right? So yep. Four Face Liar, Beldenville Blasters, the, the Clyde's Corners of the world. You, you start to recognize and go, wait, isn't that where this person plays? Isn't that where this person plays? Yep. I recognize that person. And so you'll start to see like, hey, everyone from St. Uh, St. Louis or everyone from um, uh, Portland or wherever, they all hunt together and they stick together. <laughs> That's awesome. The building communities here. That's the greatest, greatest part. It's been cool to see everyone reunited. Obviously, it's been two years since everyone's been together in person. Obviously, with coronavirus canceling the last tournament last year, the 13th. And it's the 13th annual, anyways. You don't want to, you don't want to mess around with the 13th no, annual. Unlucky. Tournament. That's unlucky. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's why COVID happened. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that. <laughs> maybe that's why the event just didn't happen last year. <laughs> that's exactly right. As we're watching, Andrew. Do a good job in the bonus round. Andrew Moskowitz uh, actually works at Reddit on the community team. So big shot to Andrew from uh, New York, New Jersey area. Moved out to San Francisco. Moved back to Hoboken, I believe, during the pandemic. Part of the Reddit slash Big Buck Hunter community, as you can imagine. That's also the hunting party. And competes at the Horseshoe Bar in Hoboken, New Jersey. So this is super fun uh, to think about. So Andrew works at Reddit, right? Yep. So somewhere, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that there's a Reddit watch party, right? So we used to have a competitor, uh, Julia, who played, uh, works at Riot Games. Yep. And, and every year she'd come and compete, there's a Riot watch party. And like literally no her, her coworkers are all watching, they're talking about it in Slack, they're cheering her on. I mean, it is, it's such a cool community game. And I, I think, don't quote me on this, um, but Riot Games went down the rabbit hole of getting a Big Buck Hunter game. No way. Because they were so in like in frazzled by this idea that they had this professional Big Buck Hunter player uh, that they went down the rabbit hole of like, hey, we got to support this. You got to be kidding and me. They got one for the office. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, I could totally see Riot doing that because, you know, Riot's all about the people. And uh, I, I got to say, it's a pretty cool culture at Riot Games. So that is amazing and cool to see different communities rally around these players. Obviously, congrats, against to, congrats against to, again to Andrew, who uh, placed third place the World Championships in 2018. So 
no stranger to competition here in this tournament. He's going to advance to round two. Yep, and 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 we're seeing a lot of stranger names, uh, stranger names, newer names. Newer names. Sorry, newer names in this next round. Uh, we're going to jump on with round number two once it starts off. Cesar Garcia against Nicolas Sanadinos. Now this is. Uh, this is a lot of fun, right? I love seeing this. There's so many new faces in this competition this weekend that, for all we know, there could be a new champion Can you that imagine? literally has never played in a world championship before. It'd be insane. Which, you know, there's typically the same players. We talked about a lot of these players that have won year after year. Typically the same players come back and win and compete. But it's been two years. Players could have been grinding this game for the last two years. A lot has changed, now, and obviously in two years, people had kids during COVID. And obviously, that kind of caused a lot of that. But uh, honestly, I'm excited to see if any of these rookies can come through and make, make, make some noise. And there is so much money on the line that even if you just watched this event a couple of years ago and just said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna play in this," you absolutely can. This is a game that you can just go down to the bar and practice, yeah. right? <laughs> this is absolutely the game that you can just go home and play for fun. Anything can happen tonight. Yeah, that's a great point. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our next game. Nicholas Ciradinos versus Cesar Garcia. So to see what Cesar can do, and they're going to both miss the trophy there. And they both doed out. And oh, they did both do out. And keep in mind here, this is a zombie round, Cal. I'm talking about that. Yeah, so, uh, excuse me. So this is uh, another new animal, so you're going to see some uh, interesting uh, design as some of these animals come in uh, zombified a little bit. But when we, t when we talk about this doing out, it's important to highlight, if, if one of these players does out, slow down the game. Step back, hey, I've got all the time in the world, I can shoot as much or as little as I want. To see two players go out at the, the, the top of the competition, yeah. that's not something you can do later. Nicholas goes out again and you pick up four for Caesar. I mean, like, that's could not be a better situation. 3,800, 3,200, close game. That, that's right. We got a good one here on screen and on stage. We've seen a lot of blowout so far, but between these two competitors, we got an interesting one. Nicholas versus Caesar, tied, nearly tied right now, neck and neck type of gameplay. We're going to site number three. Let's see what they can do. And we've seen doughouts outs on every single site so far between oh. these two. So uh, again, we're going to be looking to see if either of them can make it through a full round without. So far, we're looking good. Three to two, four to two. Another round in favor of Caesar. And yeah, nice shot from Caesar right there, and there you go. There's gonna be the big lead taken from Caesar. But look how just as quick as he took that three, four K lead, Nicholas could come back and do the same exact thing next round. Cal. Again, they both doed out multiple times. So if Nicholas does out here, Caesar takes his time, steps back. Easy, easy opportunity to come back. And then there's the bonus game. So all we need to see here is Caesar stumble a little bit, and Nicholas can absolutely come back. Yeah. Caesar part of the bros before Doe's hunting party. Shout out to y'all if you're watching right now from Austin, Texas. Plays with the Luster Pearl in Austin. He's in consulting. See what he can do here. Has the lead right now, two to two, tied up. And misses the head, actually connects for the headshot right there is going to be Nicholas. And just like that, slowly narrowing that gap, Calm. Caesar does out exactly as we said he needed to. Nicholas, though, down 2,000. Yeah needs to score big in the bonus game. If he does manage to come in and clean house in the bonus game, he's probably going to walk away with it. If he doesn't just dominate the bonus game, he may not be so lucky. We've got one more sight, but Nicholas oh. probably just put the nails in his own coffin. That might be right. It's unfortunate round for Nicholas. And he just didn't, he didn't need to necessarily be super risky right there. Obviously, it might have been a mistake. And Caesar's going to capitalize. That's going to be six bucks picked up for Caesar. 13,000 points, that's going to be almost double the score, and you got to think it's a little too late now for Nicholas. That one site added 3,000 to Nicholas, or sorry, to Caesar, and zero to Nicholas, right? That's how quick it can turn around. Imagine if those roles were reversed there. Imagine if Nicholas uh, didn't go out and Caesar did. That's 3,000 points on Nicholas' side. Suddenly, it's anyone's game. Obviously, that's not necessarily the case here. Caesar's probably going to be moving on to the next round. Sorry, we'll absolutely be moving around to the next round. We're going to jump on with game number one. Mike Byrne against Mike pa Michael Paulson still happening. Mike Byrne, veteran in the space, been here for a long time, putting on uh, a little bit of a show here, up about 8,000 points. Yeah, oh my gosh, absolutely dominating. Congrats, though, to both competitors. Nicholas is going to go down to the, to the reload round. Not done yet by any means. From Scottsdale, Arizona, goes to Doc and Eddie's. Is a woodworker and carpenter, 28 years old, and also a rookie in this competition. Welcome, Nicholas, to the Big Buck World Championship. Excited to see what you can do in the world in the, reboot, uh, the reload round. And really quick, Nicholas here, 108 C. What is uh, Caesar? Caesar? So that must put Caesar somewhere near yeah, the top. Yeah, you're right. Let's go check out real quick where Caesar's at, if we can, in a second. Meanwhile, if we could switch on over to Mike Byrne versus Michael Paulson, that'd be fantastic. They're in a, a close game. 
that game is just it's just building up. Mike Byrne, fourteen thousand. Caesar Michael was the thirtieth seed. Okay, so so yeah. they're both rookies, which is a luxury. But you, are we in round two or is this round one still? The one, the this one is all round one. Okay, we're okay. in we're in round one for uh, probably about another yeah. 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, we, we got hundred plus people to get through, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll be here for a week. With, chill with for five a while. games on stage, so we're going yeah, ten exactly. at a time. So we've got about ten rotations that of people that'll be on stage. That's right. That's right. Still in round one. We'll see what game we can jump into here momentarily, and we'll we'll keep you updated. I think Mike Byrne maybe took the win over Michael Paulson. 14K to 2K, that, that match will be wrapping. Make it 17K to 4K, that match will be wrapping up here. Congratulations to Mike. Meanwhile, Cesar Garcia gonna take the win, 16K to 8K overall in points. Cesar advances, AKA the Czar, to the next round. Nicholas will be going down to the reload round. Excited to see what he can do in the reload round, AKA the loser's bracket. We got Lee Herbert versus Stuart Stavall, Alex Tonneson versus Anthony Eretz, Ileana Bolanos versus Angie Staples, and Scott, the one and That's only. That that is the man. That is Scott Van Hoobison. Who's he going up against? I don't I don't have it. But but I do want to point out, on the topic of Mike Byrne, this is a man who has placed top five at multiple world championships. Right. So that's not a you don't don't go down and be like, yep. oh man, I just got my ass kicked in round one. You've got to keep in mind like, you play Mike Byrne. You played Mike Byrne. Right. Exactly. And so it's it's tough because. I think a lot of these rookies probably don't know who these people are, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. If you're coming in and this is your first world championship, Mike Byrne is nobody to you. Yeah, you don't true. know that. But if you did, you're playing Mike Byrne. That's <laughs> like going up against Trevor Gartner not knowing it's Trevor Gartner, like, and then losing and being like, ah, oh, how could I lose? Well, you play Trevor Gardner. <laughs> That's right. It's like playing against Los Angeles Lakers, not realizing you're yeah. playing against Los Angeles. Yeah, exactly. Like, just, just, playing some street, LeBron James? just playing some street ball with James and has no idea, right? <laughs> have no idea. Yeah, right. That's right. So <laughs> that being said, congratulations to Michael. You obviously go out on the reload round and have a chance to compete tomorrow. And again, I mentioned it earlier, but no one's getting eliminated from the tournament today. They'll have a chance to compete tomorrow. If you're watching from home, you want to watch your close friends and family that are on the main stage here momentarily, don't forget, go to bigbuckhunter.com. We actually have a multi-stream interface. You can select which Ever stream you want of the five games. All five games are being played. We're only going to obviously have commentary over the main stream that's on the broadcast. The other streams will not have necessarily anything on broadcast or any commentary, but you can check out who you want to check out. In the meantime, as we get the next round started, we're going to go ahead and throw it back to Omar with another interview. Hey guys, I am with Aaron Avery right now. All right, so two things. One, you are a first time player, so you're a rookie here. But two, you're a little more dedicated to the game than I think any other people here, so I need you to break down why you are so dedicated and show us why you're so dedicated. Well, so um, I started playing in December 2019, and uh, I was like, this game's pretty cool, and then I uh, found out the whole world thing, and then it evolved into the regionals because we weren't able to go to the worlds because of COVID. So we had regionals at our place, and uh, awesome people, met a lot of people. They're great. They came to our place. Uh, we played the regional tournament. I won. Congrats. Expecting to. Wasn't expecting to win. I promise. So that goes into I told my tattoo artist, I said, hey, if I win this whole thing, which I won't, Monday morning we'll get a Big Bucks Hunter tattoo. And you won. So this, so this is one right here, this Big Buck. And where's, oh my gosh. And then where's the other? Uh, and the other one we got today. Today. So what are you doing if you win everything this weekend? What's that? What are you doing if you win everything this weekend then? I don't know. I'll probably do another one. But uh, here's the uh, the uh, the bonus. The bonus cow. You can feel it. But, um, yeah, man, everybody's great here. It's a good community. I love it. Um, you get together, have a good time, drink some beer. Shoot bucks. It's all good, man. Honestly, there's no better way to sum it up. Aaron, best of luck to you. Great, great first round win. Guys, I'm going to send it back up to you to catch up on the games. Thanks so much, Omar. Talk about dedication to the big buck scene here. This guy has an utter ship bonus game. Like, come on. How cool is that? That's awesome. Big shot to y'all. Aaron, thanks so much for the passion you showed. And the tattoo artist back down from your hometown over did that awesome work on the, on the ink as well. But real quick as we're taking a little bit of a pause for a second before we jump back into gameplay, I got to highlight not only are the players here playing for $100,000, you can compete at home for a $5,000 prize pool on Big Buck Hunter Marksman. That is the mobile app. So make sure to download it 
on iOS, on the Samsung Galaxy Store, or if you have an Android phone that is not a Samsung device like myself, you can go and online and download it at skillswithaz.com slash bigbuckhunter as we'll take a look here at the standings as it currently stands, powered by Skills. Big Buck Hunter Marksman, currently Lorik in first place, will win that $5,000 prize pool. But not over yet. You still have all the way until 4 o'clock p.m. tomorrow to compete. And you get five entries total. Two of those entries are free. The other three entries after that, if you want to keep trying to increase your score, one dollar each. Right. And 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 you're talking five thousand cash. You've got about twenty hours to enter. It's worth it. You oh. can literally play it from your couch at home and win five K. Come on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can literally play it from our casting desk right here, which Callum has been doing actually all weekend. <laughs> we are we are personally entering to win five thousand dollars. So again, once if you're at home, you want a chance to compete, you, you never know. Go, jump in. If you're competitive, play a couple warm-up games, learn the tricks, especially any of the pro gamers that maybe are watching from my Twitter, you might win $5,000. Look, it's free real estate if you ask me, but let's send it over to game number one, Nicole White against Christy McKinnon. I do want to just highlight a couple of things while we jump to this game. There are some neck-and-neck -neck matches. Jacqueline Stafford against Christina Eddy is literally 100 apart going into the bonus game. We've seen them on screen here. Not sure if we're going to jump in, but they are neck and neck on the other screens. We have Matthew Garver, uh, world champion of the past, uh, a competitor for years upon years. He's up about 8,000. He's feeling comfortable. He's feeling good. He's in a, a good place. Jonathan Harden against Kevin Deers. About 10,000 difference between them with Kevin in the lead. And then Tori Thompson against Stefan Sponseller. So we have both Stefan and Christina Eddy on stage playing against uh, different people, yep. but a couple. This is a partner. Neck and neck, right? I mean, what happens if they both lose? Who consoles who? <laughs> yeah, at that point, you're just both consoling each other, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. That's the reality. Both of them from Portland, Oregon. I had a chance to talk to them earlier. Big shout out to them. One is the executive chef at their bar locally in Portland. I think it's Nick's, Nick something. Nick's Chili Dogs? Uh, Nick's Coney Island? Nick's Coney Island. If I Nick's Chili correctly. Dogs. Nick's Chili Dogs? <laughs> Nick's Coney Island. It's one and the same, it's right? It's I mean. same exact thing, yeah. <laughs> in Portland, Oregon. Big shout out to them for coming through because we're going to jump in to gameplay here on screen. Count, who do we got? Game number one, this must be Nicole White and Christy McKinnon. A little over the shoulder glance here, but as far as scores go, Nicole White is leaning up. 11,000 to 1,000. Christy McKinnon, rookie year, new competition, so just uh, getting some dust off, maybe some onstage jitters. That's right, that's right. Christy from New York City, plays at Ace Bar, occupation, business stuff. And hunting fuel, what does she like to drink? Well, it's beer. What do you do? Business, business stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Big shot to Christy. All these players filled out a little player bio, which is awesome, by the way. Some very creative things that were chosen. I sure. love it. What do you do? Business stuff. Business. What do you drink? Beer. <laughs> How do you shoot? Right. A woman of few words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, uh, one of these recognized Dang. bars out of New York, playing out of this bar. Uh, even shots here, three three across the board. Christy Nicole, again. It doesn't really matter at this point how close these sites are. Nicole is so far in the lead that it's going to be a struggle. This is crazy close on game number four. Game just ended. Jacqueline Stafford does find herself moving on to the next round. We're going to jump over to game number two here any moment as Ray Upshaw against uh, Jimmy Springsteel. What a last name. Jimmy Spring. I feel like he should be a rock star. <laughs> Jimmy, go into music, please. Jimmy Springsteel. Come on. I'm thinking how, Bruce Springsteen, but still, cool Jimmy Springsteen, even cooler, I think, than Springsteen, to be honest with you. <laughs> Big shots, Nicole White will be cleaning up here. She wins it. From Lakeland, Florida, Nicole White Lightning, more like it. Car sales woman, part of the What the Buck hunting party, playing at 716 Burgers and Brew. Big shout out to Nicole. She's going to win this one and clean up here momentarily. I love, I love seeing the player profile pictures. I think one day, sometime in the future, Big Buck Hunter needs to figure out how we can get the player profile pictures on the stream as well. Yeah. Because some of them are just genuinely like, like uh, Melissa's, for example, right? The the remaking of The Shining, the Axley, the door scene with the mascot of Big Buck Hunter. Like, that's so just intelligent. Amazing. And she's done pictures in the past where she's done like a, a NASA astronaut and the dogs were with her. Like, it's just, yeah. the creativity it's of the amazing. is just We totally awesome. should have fed our production team with those pictures, those assets to put on screen, because yep. that would have been fantastic. Agreed. Next year, yeah, we'll remember that. We'll These get, players we'll submitted their own picture, got very creative. And here you go, you see it on screen. Nicole White Lightning advances. Congratulations to Nicole from Lakeland, Florida, once again. She'll make it to winner's bracket round two. Meanwhile, her competition will be get out in the reload bracket. You have to lose twice in this tournament to be knocked out, so we still got some time. Right, nobody oh, is going home tonight, so no matter what, 
We'll see Jimmy Spring Steel tomorrow, too. Yeah, here we go. Look at this. We got a close one. Neck and neck matchup here between Ray Upshaw and Jimmy Spring Steel. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Yeah, only 700 points separate the two. It looks like they're going to be starting up on the bow site next. A lot of animals right in the middle. Ray takes an amateur mistake and goes out. And Jimmy says, hey, we're buddies. We're in this together. I'll do out with you. <laughs> and they both go out. Oh, my God. No points awarded, just about. Like, what? And look at the score, neck and neck at 2.3K apiece. This is the tightest match we've seen so far, Cal. That's what, 39 points? My math is hard, so don't judge me, but I think it's like 39 points is all that separates these two. We've got three sites and a bonus to go. Jimmy starts out strong, picking up two of his own. Critters look to get evenly split, but Jimmy does a beautiful job cleaning up the site. Picks up five of the six bucks of this one and gives himself a solid 3,000 point lead. Yeah, it's a nice little cushion, but obviously can't rest in his laurels just yet because one round, one site away could his competition, Ray, easily tie it back up here. So we're going to site number four here. This time they will hopefully not doe out. We'll see what they can do. Of course, when we say doe out, what does that mean? If you kill a doe, then you're actually out of the round, out of the site. You, you want to only kill the bucks that have the horns. Keep that in mind here as we continue. Yep, and you'll actually you see a dot icon appear on the bottom right or the bottom it. left of the screen yeah. if you see it happening. So if you're wondering why a player just stops shooting, why they step back, whatever it may be, well, they probably dote out. That's right. Jimmy Springsteel from Cleveland, Ohio. Congratulations to your Cleveland Browns for the victory over my Bears last weekend. It was a tough one to watch, that's for sure. Plays at Hatfield's Good Grub. He's a mechanic, 30 years old. He likes hams. Very simple man. <laughs> I didn't think about the beer for a second. I thought you were just saying, like, this guy really likes ham. I was just like, what a weird thing <laughs> to put in your bio. He likes ham. He put in his bio. <laughs> what a weird thing to put in your bio. But the other thing to note, this guy's a rookie, and he's doed out. So Ooh. Ray Upshaw gets to take his time. Keep in mind, yeah. Ray Upshaw right now is down 3,000 points. But he just put up six bucks and the dangerous game. Oh, so we're God. Oh, he does out instead of getting it. But Ray. Nonetheless, picks up buck after He's buck after buck. Cussed. That might be enough to give him a lead going into the final site. But nonetheless, it's going to be a close one. So this final site can determine if one of them just runs away with it, they can t win it. Or we might see a game that comes out of the bonus round count. Yeah, and this is, uh, keep in mind, actually, they both towed out of an early site, so they're going into the bonus game. 700 points that separate them. This is what we were talking about earlier when we said the bonus game can make or break it. This is exactly what we we're talking about. If Jimmy can tie the bonus game, Jimmy wins this round. If Ray Upshaw wins the bonus game with a couple points over Jimmy, there's a good shot that Ray will win this. Insane. Well, it all comes down to this. Ray's up by a significant amount right now. Ray is, of course, the veteran against Jimmy, the rook. Ray's coming from Texas part of the Texas shot takers, and it's really Ray running away with this one, Cal. Yeah, and this is so tough because, I mean, again, like we played bonus games earlier, right? Yeah. When you start to miss or you start to go down, it is so hard to get that rhythm back, yeah. especially when someone else who has these tracks memorized is sitting there going, hey, boom, 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 I'm good. I know exactly where it's going, right? So Jimmy, falling down here by 10, we'll see how this last one or two lines up, but Ray might have done just enough to punch his ticket through to the next round in the winner's bracket. But nonetheless, we certainly had a close one. Ray Upshaw running away with it right now. Jimmy obviously put up a big fight as well. The rookie, his first time competing today. And, you know, Ray says, you know what? I'm going to take a look at the score here. 700 points shows, between yeah. them. Wow. With Jimmy in the lead. And I think with that pat on the what? back, Ray Upshaw does take it Barely. by 400. Down 700. Does well enough in the bonus that he ends up back on top. Ray Upshaw goes through in the winner's bracket, 10,695 to 10,205. That's how close these bonuses are. What a match that was. It came down to the wire, came down to the bonus round, and Ray advances, but barely. Jimmy put up a great fight. I'm excited to see what Jimmy can do in the reload bracket, Cal. Look, he put up a good show, and, and he's a rookie going up against someone who's been here before, has yeah. played in this competition. That's right. Whether it's on stage jitters, whether it's, hey, this is just tough competition. We've had other players say, hey, I haven't played in a minute. So I love his jersey, the shot takers. That's fantastic. Texas shot takers, baby. Hold everything. <laughs> Game number two. Andy Lynn and Alex Durho. Oh, baby. The These Yorker. are two friends. I would even say they're close enough to be called brothers. Both out of New York. Andy Lynn, the Big Buck Ninja, has been at every single world championship, is, is a complete legend. If you're at the venue, the uh, Self-Portrait self Project is here. It's a photo booth in a Big Buck Hunter game. It's Andy Lynn's project. Uh, the Self-Portrait Project is 
is so cool. You go in, you just take photos, right? Yeah. You share them with yourself. It's a great time. And Andy built it. And he built it. And he, awesome. he takes it to movie festivals. I mean, this man, like, it's it's a whole thing. It's badass. So if you're in the venue, if you're in the town, come down and take some photos. But I cannot wait to see it. That's one of these things where, like, Andy Lynn and Alex Durho, both of these players are good enough to be, like, top ten, right? Both of these players are consistent enough that they can hang at the top. Yeah, and we're, of course, excited to jump into that one. Before we do that, let's re recap our matches here. Adam Shaw versus Jaron Anderson. Jaron advances. Stephen Mosier over Bobby Boaz. Stephen advances with a close one. Dennis Whitchurch versus Christopher Harper. 13K to 9K, also a close one. And then that neck-and-neck -neck matchup we saw. Ray Upshaw barely sneaking through to the winner's bracket round two over Jimmy Springsteel. Nicole White, of course, takes it over Christy. But with that said, you hit the nail on the head. Let's go ahead and jump into Andy Lynn versus Alex Darrow here in a moment. When that gets started, it's going to be a great one, Cal. Yeah, I honestly, I don't even know who I I, I want to say Andy Lynn's going to win it because Andy Lynn's just so cool. And then I'm sitting here like Alex Durho's also cool. <laughs> like I've seen Alex <laughs> you, Durho. You called him a ladies' man earlier. I, Cal. They look, the whole New York crew is ladies' man. Like, <laughs> like, let's be real. Every single one of them. No, I, 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 look, Andy Lynn, Alex Durho could go anyway. It really could. Uh, you can already see they're talking on stage. They're buddies. That's they awesome. know it. Second to the left, right? Yep, second to the left. Game number two. That's right. Andy Alan, Lynn. And Andy, of course, best placement at the World Championship. Fifth place in 2010. It's been, it's been a minute. a long time. We're talking 11 years this guy's been coming to these competitions. It's amazing. Look at the stats. He has 77,000 bucks killed, 53,000 critters killed. He's put in the work. He's a creative director. 43 years old, and he likes himself some five loco. Is what his uh, hunting fuel of choice is. Plays at the Bushwick Country Club, part of the back alley critter waxers. It's great. It's 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 funny because like there's one of these things where you're like, what's your favorite drink? And someone says like four or five loco, and you're like, what? People Excuse drink? me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? Is this 2009? Are we in college? Legal? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they sold them anymore. But let's go ahead and jump in. Andy off to a great start here. Talk about exactly how you want to kick things off. This Ooh. last dough is huge. It's gonna be a buck picked up. Andy take a deep, takes a deep breath, and that's a great start. Yeah, and I don't think it made much of a difference, but Durho did dough out there right at the end. Yep. Uh, again, I think Andy Lynn walked away with it at that point, so no real damage done. That's right. Alex is a voiceover artist from Brooklyn, New York, and he likes to drink Michelob, Michelob Ultra. He's uh, healthy. Look at that mustache. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's we got round two, sight two. Oh, my Bad good. One. Did you see that shot in the back right? Really? Literally like a sliver of buck over a doe, and he takes a shot. Yeah. That is so risky. When you see the start of these sites, guys and girls at home, you'll you'll notice there are does often concealing a buck, right? They're standing right in front or just off to the side. And so it's a risky first shot, especially with somehow these animals jump, right? First shot, jump, and then they start running around. Andy Lynn said, that's a deep shot. I'm going to take the risk. And it worked out really freaking well for him. Yeah, especially when you have a lead, you're up early, site two, that's when you take those risks, right? You like to see it from Andy. But I gotta say, Andy's looking fantastic right now. Going up against Alex, the season you better himself. Andy's just cleaning the house, playing very, very well. Yeah, Durho is uh, gonna be heading to the bar early tonight, I think. <laughs> I think this is gonna be a, a solid win for Andy Lynn. He's up uh, 10,000 points. I don't think he's going to be taking it anytime soon, but we are going to jump down to game number four, Sean Stafford against Mia Bracket. It's a little bit closer of a game. It's a little bit more neck and neck. We're only 800 points that separate the two on game number four, Sean Stafford against Mia Bracket. Sean, one of the New York crew. He's a vet. He's been here a long time. Partner Jacqueline Stafford. Good practice partner. He's Sean Wyatt counts. That's right. We'll see what they can do. Meanwhile, just a quick final thoughts. Alex Duro, first place in the 2010 World Championship that Andy got fourth place in. So that's a little bit of a rematch between them two. But let's go ahead and jump into this one. Sean Stafford versus Mia Bracken. Yeah, Sean starts out pretty decently. Mia not able to pick up any of her own first critter going that's over one. to Sean. Mia picks up her first as Sean finds a doe. Not necessarily too punishing. Happened right at the end. It looks like Sean's going to walk away with four here with Mia picking up two of her own. So. 5,000 points between them. I think we've got one site left going in with a bonus game. So again, if Sean does out early here, Mia's gonna be comfortably uh, comfortable enough to get a few thousand points on the board, but she, uh, she goes out. She fires early and you can see the marker left on the tree. I think Sean might have baited that shot, hit the tree. Mia panics, thinks, hey, I need to fire there. Takes a shot, hits the go. Sean picks up all six of his own. Again, this is the kind of game that's super unforgiving. That's right. 
Sean's been competing, got 14th place in the World Championship in 2018. Also, as mentioned, from New York, part of the Pine Box Rock Shop, alongside Alex Duro, who we saw earlier, and part of the NYC Old Bucks hunting crew. 39 years old, a teledata technician. We'll see if Sean can close this one out over me up. Pirate ship bonus round, and with a significant advantage, I think he should be able to win it. Yeah, I agree. I do want to take a second to highlight how beautiful those cabinets look. Big bug reloaded, new cabinets, they've yeah. got cup holders and everything. You won't believe this. One of the biggest requests that you get from players when you're working with a studio like this is, hey, we need somewhere to put our beer. <laughs> and in the past, they're putting them on other games, or they're putting it on other tables, or whatever. And so the Big Buck Hunter Reloaded, one of the big things that was, I mean, when I say one of the big things, I mean, like, this is groundbreaking in the gaming <laughs> world, right, in the arcade industry. Cup holders Cup on the holes. side of it. And so now, hey, you're playing some Big Buck. Not only do you have a new uh, canister where you put the guns so they're not falling off the side, but you've got these beautiful cup holders. And those really do make a difference when you're going to the bar for four or five hours and you're just trying to shoot some bucks and take some beers. I love it, man. And what do you think people are more excited about, the cup holders or the fact that Big Buck Hunter Reloaded comes with like four other games, Terminator Salvation and others? Honestly, it's tough. Buy the cup holders. I was going to say, it's probably the cup holders. Like, I'm just, not going to lie with you. That's awesome. Big shot to play mechanics. And that's the coolest thing. Play mechanics, you obviously worked there for many, many years. And uh, Nick Petro uh, and, and, and Alex Petro, the sons of George Petro, the founder of Play Mechanics, came from Midway. They've been doing this for a very, very long time. And I actually got to hear directly from Alex, who we just saw on screen for a second. Play Mechanics it was struggling in the early years when he left Midway. It wasn't until Big Buck Hunter and the success of Big Buck that helped fuel their success for the last 20 years. It's so unique to hear about the, um, the, the, Andy, the, the industry of old, right? So when I say the industry of old, I'm talking like hearing the stories from George and the crew about, hey, this is how we kicked off this game. This is how we did this game. Like Cruise and Exotica, right? Yep. Mortal Kombat, whatever it may have been, Aerosmith. Hearing about these OG games and the stories behind it and like the fact that you, you almost have these people building these games back in the, the 80s and 90s who become like overnight celebrities. And we're talking nerds with overnight success in the gaming industry. I mean, you got to keep in mind, like, this this world hasn't existed for that long. And the arcade industry is what started it all. That's so true. It's crazy to think about how, you know, players nowadays, we're, we're at the Big Buck World Championships, people play in championships for other games for millions of dollars in right. prize pool. It really all started because the competitions in arcades in the 80s yep. and 90s, and of course, a lot of these games, you know, Mortal Kombat, that that George Petro worked on at Midway right. before making it over to, to Big Buck and of course, Play Mechanics. So, awesome story for sure, and it's great to hear the history of the roots of, uh, of gaming, really, that's where it started. First World Championship? Uh, don't tell me, I know this. It was. Uh, I know you do, because I saw it in one of your PowerPoints. Yeah, it was. Not Tetris. Nope. It was um, Galaga? Nope. Close, though. It's some of the shooting spaceships. Yeah. You're, you've one word, correct? Space Invaders. Yes. 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 <laughs> There you go. Insane to think about. Space Invaders was the first <laughs> world championship of esports, which is absolutely insane. So, anyways, Fallout here alongside Cal. We're having some fun. Hope you guys are enjoying at home. Again, we got to keep saying it because we got to keep showing love. Big shout out to the Aussies that are watching right now, bright and early Saturday morning in Australia. We're going to go ahead and throw it over to Omar with an interview, I believe, with Andy. We'll check in. I think he's got Andy. Andy yeah. Durho. You know what? I've got both uh, Alex Durho and Andy Wynn. All right, guys. It's tough that you had to face each other in the first round because you have known each other for so long. So, Alex, I'm going to start with you. When you saw Andy's name pop up on that first round matchup, what went through your mind? Fuck. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if you could say it any better than that. I think that, that's, that says a lot. Uh, Andy, what about you? What, what did you think when Durho popped up? But, oh, my reaction? when Mine was a little bit different. Mine was more like, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Look, two sides of the same coin telling amazing <laughs> stories. Um, now, you guys had to face each other. Duro, look, it was a tough it was a tough outing, and he came out really strong. Yeah, um, he did. So, one, I want you to tell me how you felt knowing that you were getting beat that badly, and then tell me your favorite thing about Andy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. To be honest, that was probably one of my baddest beats, worst beats there, there's, yeah, that's ever happened. Uh, you know. It was, it was just a couple minutes ago. I'm still kind of taking it all in. Uh, it sucked. Yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorite matches I've ever played. No. Ever, uh, everything else is gravy during this world championship. No. Just This is all worth it, just for this. <laughs> well, look, the beauty of this is you guys could face off again at some point down the tournament, so work on your shots. I want that. All right, he, he doesn't want it, but we'll see if it happens. Yeah. You guys, hey, good to see you, good to see you.
Pleasure as always. Yeah. Pleasure as always. I'm going to send it back to you guys up there. We got plenty Andy of great Lynn's action. Here. To continue. Andy Lynn's here. <laughs> By the way, can I get a ticket to the gun show for Andy Lynn, please? That was probably one of the best interviews I have seen in gaming, period. My jaw is like literally hurting from we were just dying. laughing and smiling so much. The, the different versions of the F word that we heard from the reactions of both of them when they found out they were playing each other, that was fantastic. And, and we talked about like the friendship and camaraderie before they even played each other. You could see it there throughout that entire interview, right? Yeah. One of them literally just got sent to the loser's bracket, and they're both just down on the floor drinking, having fun, <laughs> laughing with each other, just enjoying their time here like it's amazing it doesn't get better than this if you are not here at the big buck world championship you better be here next year because you can tell it is a fantastic time we're in rosemont right outside of chicago which is a great spot to go out out of the way someone tells me some of these players will be enjoying themselves a friday night here in chicago as we get ready for our next round or our next wave of matches in round number one at least and you see on screen they're underway cal yeah we're gonna jump on to game number one aaron simper against victoria nicholas neck and neck 2600 to 3900 so we're still pretty close and this is after three sites this is the important thing to note these zeros go outs yeah. so every single site they've played so far one of these two has hit a doe wow insane so far a few does for each players and looks like they're now gonna be making their way to the bonus round I believe we'll try and catch that if we can Victoria Nicholas from Winter Haven Florida I think that's right outside of Orlando plays the burgers and Brew. she's an accounting manager 29 years old I just turned 29 so we share an age at least shot to Tori Let's see what you can do. Yeah, and this is uh, 2,000 points between the two going yeah. into this 5,000 to 3,000. So it is definitely uh, winnable for either of them. But again, Victoria sitting comfortably with 2,000 points. All she needs to do is keep that score and just coast through, right? If she can just it, it, it even hold an, uh, an even score. Yep. She's, she's got a ticket to the bank. She's and, good. And so far, so good. 12 to 11 is exactly what, what Tori needs and Tori wants right now. She'll be able to close this one out here. Aaron needs to go huge. And when I say huge, I mean she needs to absolutely clean sweep all these cannonballs in the bonus round. And not going to happen entirely. She gets a few, has the lead. But is it enough, Cal? I don't think so. It's like she almost hurt you, like a little know, bit. right? But like maybe a little bit too late. Victoria manages to tie it up 21-21. And that's exactly what we said, right? Yeah. All she needs to do is maintain an even score and she's through to the next round. And you see the camaraderie there. They shake hands. They're both excited. Congratulations, though, to one of our rookies. It's Tori from Winter Haven, Florida. She'll advance. 29 years old, accounting manager. All right, all right, all right. So that's uh, going to be another solid round of matches on stage. Victoria Nicholas does punch her way to the next round. So does Jason Brulette, Samantha Giddens, Lindsay Morris, and Jose Garcia all find their way through to the next round. Impressive stuff. They'll make it to round number two. Meanwhile, the losers, Nicole right there, will make it down to the reload bracket. We'll have a chance to compete and keep grinding their way through the tournament here. And just want to also point out once again, you can also compete from home. The Big Buck Hunter Marksman Challenge, powered by Skills, which is the platform, the mobile platform behind Big Buck Hunter Marksman. This is the leaderboard you see on screen. It is it a mobile game for Big Buck Hunter? $5,000 first place prize pool to whoever takes home the first place prize. Right now it is Loric, as you see on the far left of the screen right there. Download Big Buck Hunter Marksman in the iOS Apple Store, or of course in the Samsung Galaxy Store, or if you have an Android phone that is not a Samsung, you can go to big, uh, skills.com slash Big Buck Hunter, that's skills with a Z. Make sure to play. It's impressive. Thank that you. was a good. That was that was well right? done. That was not bad. Sounds like I rehearsed or read it. But yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. All from the noggin. I, so I would add 20 hours left of competition. Very that true. ends after this weekend. I think 4 p.m. Central tomorrow. So if you want to enter in and compete, I've seen Lorik. Every time we've seen that leaderboard, he's sitting on the top, right? Yeah. So if you want to enter in for your chance of 5K, go down into the app. Big bucks. You saw it on there with a Z on yep. the end. Enters you into the competition. Your first two plays are free. Your next three are a dollar each. Not bad. And you get five opportunities to put up the highest score possible for five grand. That's right. And again, big big bucks with the Z. When you when you load up the game, we did a little bit earlier, you'll see enter match code and you type in big bucks. I, I had a great time. I thought it was awesome. It was clean. It was well done. Yeah, great, uh, good, great experience. It, it's, a good, it's a good app. And, I mean, skills, everyone knows skills, right? If you play mobile games, you know skills. They are, without a doubt, the largest, the biggest, and the best mobile game developer. So it's super exciting that we've seen a Big Buck Hunter uh, game 
developed in-house and put out on the market on the Skills platform. In partnership with Skills from the beginning too, right? Big which, is, which is awesome. I love to see that partnership. Skills, of course, the number one mobile games platform that provides fair competition to everyone. And even games, not just Big Buck Hunter, obviously any other mobile games. Solitaire, <laughs> yep. Bingo. My, my sister's watching right now. She's so My sister loves to go and play Bingo with like 75-year-old yeah. women. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I mean, there's a there's a famous story on Reddit. I'm sorry for going down this rabbit hole, but there's a famous story on Reddit of a guy who plays Word with Friends with like an eight-year-old grandma in Florida. Yeah. And then they became like super best friends and going down there every year for Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't think we're going to see such camaraderie here for on, Reddit. Ga yeah, on game exactly. number one with these big Buck Hunter players, but game number one, Dave Schaefer going up against Jared Erlinson. You see them here on your screen. These are two names who have been around the block. They've been here for a minute. We're starting out with Bo Sight. Dave Schaefer picks up two. Jared Erlinson struggling to connect the dots. Down four, five, can it be six? Rough round for Jared Erlinson. Yeah, it's a great start though for Dave Schaefer. We of course saw Jared's uh, significant other. Sarah, was it Sarah? Yep. Yep. Sarah competed earlier. She took home her her win. Jared's not necessarily having the same luck here. We we'll see what Jared can do. I don't know if he was fist like pumping in celebration for getting 400 points <laughs> or fist shaking in anger for getting 400 Curse points. Curse this game! But Jared Erlinson will be the first person to tell you, hey, I'm just here for the good time. That's awesome. I'm here to cheer on my wife and to have some drinks. Love to hear it. Is, is Sarah better at Big Buck than Jared? I mean, I don't want to say it, but like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd Sarah's like sharp. Like Sarah's, Sarah's scary at this game. That's awesome. And Jared's you currently getting clean swept, so uh, maybe Dave that might be, that is might be like, true. <laughs> Jared's shaking off the camera. He's going, get out of here. Like, oh, we, don't, we don't need to see this. Go away. <laughs> you guys are good. Go to Shut a different game. game please. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Jared. That's awesome. No, Jared's been around the block for a hot minute, obviously, as we talked about Clyde's Corner earlier, world's biggest beer bong. President, um, he's the president of Clyde's Corner. This yep. is his occupation. For El Presidente. <laughs> That's awesome. Part of the Beltonville Blasters hunting club. There's one. And right now, Dave is just cleaning out. Yeah. Jared's showing some life here in site number three, I believe. The yeah, question is, is it too late? Yeah. Right? Going down two sites, 8,000 points after two. It could be too late. Dave does dough out, though. Jared only manages to pick up three. So on a dough out site, there's still <laughs> only four going down. We're yeah. seeing some pretty sloppy buck hunter for like the world championship. I think it's because people haven't been here for two years, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. hundred plus players. But but the crazy thing about it is, if these kind of nerves or mistakes are happening tomorrow, good luck. I mean, this is genuinely anyone's competition. That's right. Yeah, good luck hit some of our top players, right? There's right. one. Yeah. Spot on here. He's up into site number four or five, and Dave's going to continue to roll here. Jared showing some life. There's one, another. but it's going to be another five to one sweep. Dave Schaefer should be running here. Look at the points on some of these. That 996, that, 848. That. So those are the deep, deep shots that we're talking about. That's why they're so important. If you have to prioritize between a close shot and a deep, go deep all day, right. all day. And this one should be. Wraps up momentarily. It's, it's, it's all but over, I think. I'll say it's it's over. One of those. It's, it's Dave Schaefer's Listen, walking away with most this times one. in esports commentary. We can be like, oh, they still have a chance. You kind of have to force that narrative. Not at the Big Buck Championship. No. We tell it like it is here. No, we tell it like it is. But you know, at the end of the day, there's the reload bracket. Jared's yes, here having a good time. He's going to go to the bar, have some drinks. Dave Schaefer's going to find himself on to the next round. No one goes home tonight. That is what matters. Exactly. At the end of the day, winners only for the rest of the day. Tomorrow we'll be jumping into the reload bracket and the rest of the winners down to the championship match tomorrow. Somebody will be going home $20,000. Insane to think about. Last competition in 2019, it was Andre Rivas who won that one. Phil got second in 10,000. Sean Chadwick, if you're watching, miss you, bud, from Australia. Wish you were here. Got third. Chris Freeman has been competing for a long time. Got fourth. William Bromley, and they've also been an Aussie, right? Yep. And yep. Chris, Chris Freeman played, just played on game number three. 18,000 oh by 14. Oh my gosh, over Jared Green. Chris Freeman is no stranger to competition. He's newly married yes. and has a new kid. No way. Yep. Congratulations to Chris. Chris, so. Chris Freeman is on the family glow up. <laughs> family glow up indeed. Congratulations to Chris. Long time pleasure for 10 plus years in the Big Buck World Championship. We've been doing this tournament since 2008, 2009, something like that. It's been a long time running. Amazing to see these players competing for that long of a time. Yeah, and it's, it's cool seeing some of these players coming back year over year. You know, we we often will talk to the players down on the floor and we'll say, hey, like, what keeps coming? Like, why, are you, why do you keep coming back? Like, what is bringing you back? And there's new faces every single year. And it's always, this is the community, right? When you go to esports events, when you go to tournaments, when you go to competitions, the best part 
is seeing the friends that you don't see all the time, right? It's, it's playing with the people that you connect with on social media. It's, it's being able to travel across the country and say, hey, I haven't seen you in a year. Tell me about your kids. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your friends. Like, what have you been up to? Tell me about the new job, right? And that's what you're going to see throughout this whole competition. There's so much friendship, camaraderie, and history Amazing. in this game. Next year is the 15th World Championship. Wow. 15. Insane to think about. And you've got players that are still coming from the first one. Crazy. That's incredible. And honestly, now that would be possible. I mean, Big Buck Hunter, if you think about it, you all watching at home know what Big Buck Hunter is. You play it in your local bar. A very local community type of game. You play yep. with your friends at your bar. But if it wasn't for this tournament, none of these players would know each other. This community right. that was built, so much close friendships that have been built and established because it's because of the World Championship, because every single year players have a chance to come together. If you travel, it's been a, a, a national affair, right? Vegas, yep. Austin, Chicago. You guys have yep. gone all we did the uh, Austin, Texas, we did an outdoor event. No way. Yeah, so we, we, we it's an interesting story. So we did an outdoor event in Austin, Texas on 6th Street, right? Which is one of the, the coolest oh. places to be in Austin. Great time. Uh, so we did Little this rowdy. event on, on 6th Street, and we had this really cool venue called the Belmont, and it was across the street from a high rise. And, and, and we didn't think about this when we were setting this event up. Sunset, right? At a certain time of day, the sun hit the high rise across the street oh at the perfect gosh. angle that the reflection threw off the uh, IR scanner in the guns. No way. And so it actually, like, ruined the we had to, no, we didn't ruin it. it. For like a 45 minute to an hour, we yeah. had to stop the tournament. That's insane. And then there was a little bit of drizzle, right? So we were sitting here thinking like, let's just pray for good weather. So so we, we get to the event. It's a great insurance policy, you know, and, it's just and, hope. <laughs> yeah, let's just hope. And it just starts to rain. And and, and the, the games are under a cover, so we're, we're fine. However, the inside of arcade cabinets, the way I understand it, the wood is sawdust, um, it, like uh, finely tightened compressed sawdust or whatever. And when it gets a little bit wet, it starts to expand. So we're covering the games on stage. The sun's coming oh out. My and, like, gosh. And, and, and yet, it was one of the coolest events. We yeah. had barbecue. We literally had a pit, a pit griller up on the balcony, awesome. like grilling barbecue. And we had Jaeger there. And like it was, it was such a unique experience. And then we did Vegas. And then we have Chicago. I mean, like. This event has been all over the country, and it's just little bits change every single year. And, it, and there's always that one thing that's like, that's what I loved about this event, you know? That's amazing. That's awesome. Stories like that, that's for sure. At the end of the day, all those things going on, all that, all that to manage. You're in Austin, Texas, I was going to say. You kind of right. spoke to it. Great experience overall, so I'm sure it was worth it. And that's, and that's one of the other cool things is like, you'll, and you'll see it when you go out tonight. After the event, you go to any of these bars or even just walk down the street. Hey, hey. <laughs> and you hear all these people that are like shouting at each other like and you see all these groups connecting and so it's super fun to be able to like go out on like 6th street or go out to vegas and yep. you're like walking down the strip and there's people shouting at you from across from the, the street event. from you're the event from the you're that. world championship yeah, exactly. right? and they're like they're seeing each other they haven't seen for years Amazing. Like, it's just so cool yeah that's it's an awesome cool. that's an awesome experience and if you haven't been here before highly recommend you come through to the big buck hunter world championships next year we're live from chicago right now following alongside callum we're gonna go ahead and jump to a very quick break when we come back we'll have some more big buck after this big buck hunter marksman make sure to download it on your mobile phone <laughs> Maybe not. No break. I thought we were jumping to commercial. There. there. Welcome back, everybody, to the Big Buck Hunter World Championship. Just some short breaks. That's all we take here live from Chicago, Illinois. Fallout alongside Callum, a.k.a. Flizzy Fletch, as we're enjoying some gameplay so far. You just saw on screen Big Buck Hunter Marksman. Make sure to download it on iOS, on the Samsung Galaxy Store, or at skills.com slash bigbuckhunter. But for now, it's going to be it for us. We're actually going to go throw it over to Omar for another interview. Hey, guys. So I am with the incomparable Lauren Hope. So, Lauren, your top 10 qualifier tonight. Um, you have been here many times, and you have competed very well many times, but you're also representing Canada. One, how are you feeling with this first round bye that you have? Obviously nervous. Uh, bye is nice, but I'm going into the second round where he's warmed up, and uh, I'm going in cold and jittery, so <laughs> we'll see if I can do it. 
Well, speaking of uh, cold and jittery, uh, actually just the cold part, Canada. Uh, you wanted to make sure that we knew how to pronounce every part of Canada, and so you handed us uh, this sheet. So, so what were you most concerned about? And uh, give us a quick summary of uh, what we all have in our pockets right now to remember. So 2019, uh, Callum had a bit of a rough time remembering where we were from. Uh, and kept saying Saskatoon and Saskatchewan, wada wada, or wherever. <laughs> so we made little cards of how to pronounce Saskatchewan for him, where Regina is, and that Saskatoon is just another city that has nothing to do with us. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, Callum, uh, I know you've been taking good note of that. Um, the uh, Saskatoon is far away from Regina. Back to you guys. I have never in my life been called out so aggressively before. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I will rightfully take all the blame, though. It, it is true. Uh, a couple years ago, we did struggle a little bit. But uh, we're super excited. The Canadians are here making a name for themselves. Uh, they kicked ass and took names last year. So we'll see if they can do the same this year. Now we are jumping on to game number three. We've got Jerry Holt going up against the one and only Mick Niemerski. Let's see what happens. You On the low site, Gary Holt here There's does pick up two. Reload. Critters seem to find their way out of the There's map, one. but Gary does uh, fires back with four. Reload. You nailed it. Nikolaj struggles on the site, only manages to pick up one. He's going to build out that score 10,000 to 1,600. Not the place you want to be if you're Nikolaj. This might be, might be, the last matchup of round number one. I'm not 100% certain, but I do see the rest of the stage empty with one last game going on, so I'm, uh, I'm optimistic that is what it is. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You missed this for just a second. Lauren Hope just put me straight up on blast. No. Wow. Oh. He, he, asked her, he asked her about the cards and Omar, and immediately Lauren just goes, Callum is butchering it, screwing it up. Saskatchewan? Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Lauren, I love you. Thank you for doing that. He deserves it if you messed up Saskatchewan. <laughs> you got to be more cultured. Canada's right above us. I don't I, I don't You're remember. I, I believe it, but I don't remember. You remember butchering right? Saskatchewan? It's Saskatchewan, right? Listen, like, everything you say, you say with confidence, so I can see you thinking you said it correctly, uh, but you did That's didn't. what I'm saying. Like, I don't doubt that it happened. Yeah, true. I just you don't remember, remember it. it happening. Exactly. So, like, that's when hilarious. I get put on blast like that, it just feels personal. Regina in Saskatchewan, which, um, do you know what the capital of Canada is? Quebec? Toronto? Eh, Dude, eh, I'm, uh, Vancouver? Eh. I'm stressed right now. <laughs> I'm very stressed. <laughs> this is going. not, I'm very uncomfortable. It's, it's Regina. Is it really? No, it's not. What totally is it? Good. It's not Regina. What Any other guesses? Over three. What is it? Ottawa. Ottawa. Oh, of course Ottawa, Ottawa exists. Ottawa is the capital. Of course Ottawa exists. Of course exists. Ottawa exists. Forgot about that one. Well, in my know? mind, I'm sitting there like it's Saskatchewan. It's, it's Regina. Like, it's one of these two. It has to be because that's what's so drilled into my head now. Yeah. Uh, next Ottawa. trivia question here. Ottawa. Real quick. Maybe, maybe quick because you know, Jerry's kind of cleaning the house in Mikolaj here. Real quick trivia question. There's, there's over 300 million people population in the United States. How many? How, what's the population of Canada? One million. One million? I don't know. Like, I feel like it's... One million? Well, I know, like, no. So, like... A million people course, in Canada? You said how many... Wait, you... I said there's 300 million You said three... States. I thought you said three million, so I'm sitting here like, it's got to be low. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go 100 yo, million. Yo, the Sorry. Lord roasts you for one, good purpose. 100 I'm glad. Million. Can we make this a meme? Callum and Canada <laughs> just, do, just turned out a thing. This is fantastic. I, I swear, in my mind, I heard you you're, say one million, so in my mind, I'm like three million, one million, right? That's a good, that's a good ratio. Right. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. so 300 okay, go million, I'm going to 300 plus million in the United States. How many in Canada? 100 plus million. 35 million. I feel like small. Oh, it's only 35 million. Only 35 million. million I think. So I was actually closer with my one million guess than I was. <laughs> you were. That's actually hilarious. Both equally bad guesses, by the way. Yeah. Actually, was, one million is probably the worst guess. I, but I, to be fair, like I feel like if you don't know the population of Canada. I feel, That's well, a tough one. That's next tough time one. we get Omar on the desk, I yeah. want you to open with that. All right, I'm gonna ask because him. Because yeah, he works for CNN. He should, should be cultured. He works for CNN. He should be cultured. cultured You're right. Like, if he doesn't know the capital, the capital of Canada, that's obviously hit, embarrassing. Hit him with both questions. All right, facts. Cool. Both questions. <laughs> Big shot to any Canadians watching right now supporting I, their I'm friends so, from Regina I, and I'm, Saskatchewan. I'm so glad I don't have Twitch chat open anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. It'd be fantastic. Oh, look at this holding up the easy fives. Hey. 55. 
Gary going from Texas. Home. Gary, Gary or Jerry? What do you think? Uh, that's a good question. I'm gonna go uh, either way. Either way. He's yeah. going home with the wind to the next round of the bracket. So good for I'm going him. Jerry. Mick. Congrats to Jerry Mick. advancing through from Texas, Mick finds representing. The reload. Oh, holding up the fives. What are these the fives are for? The five thousand dollars you can win on the Skills Mobile app. Probably. Nailed it! Absolutely nailed it. Five thousand dollars you can win on the Skills Mobile app. That's Big Buck Hunter Marksman. We keep talking about it for good purpose because you can make five thousand dollars. You're welcome in advance. Right now, here's the leaderboard. Lorik is currently on top, but I'm telling you, Lorik here, she's probably shaken right now because there's still 18 hours left. Yeah, there's a lot of time, but at the same time, like they're they're comfy. Like they've That's been, a good story. They've yeah. been chilling on the top of the spot. But if you are interested, of course, download this on the Apple Store, on the Samsung Store on the Android website, or you can go to Skills' website and find this, but Big Buck Hunter Marksman, it is powered by Skills. Go ahead and enter in Big Buck Z as your code, Big Bucks, to be entered into the chance to win. So obviously you play a couple of sites, top score goes through. If you come out on top, five grand, five grand. Yep. I'm hoping, coming out of this, that we're able to send a camera down to the stage, because I can hear what's happening, Oh, something's happening. And, and I see not, you behind me. You've not been at a Big Buck World Championship before, so I don't know if you know what's happening. Come on. It's, it hasn't happened Come on. yet, but it's going to happen. So game break number one My is ring toss. ring toss. Ring toss. But it's not just any ring toss. It's Big Buck ring toss. And so there's uh, a, a player is going to wear a, a helmet with antlers on it. That's and amazing. And ring toss for prizes. And someone has to try and toss the rings on the, the, yeah. the antler helmet. Yeah. That's amazing. Mike Holdsworthy, our game show host of the stage, works as a graphic designer for, for Play Mechanics and Big Buck Hunter. He is hosting the game break. We'll keep you all updated and up to speed on how that goes. But we're going to jump to a very quick break. We're going to take a look at our 2019 recap. If you missed the action, take a look. Honestly, it might be one of my favorite world championships we've ever done. We're talking Vegas. We're talking the HyperX Arena out there. The players were incredible. The competition was incredible. We had uh, new faces, new winners. I mean, we had everything that you could possibly want in a championship. So before uh, we get back into the action, we've got a game break happening on stage. We're going to send it to a quick player interview with Federica Reed from last year. You have been absolutely crushing it so far this weekend, and I, I've got a bunch of questions for you, but first, how are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. I didn't expect to get this far. I lost to Julianne in the winner's bracket. I thought after that for sure I would be done, but no, I zoomed through three more matches. Four, actually. The World Championship has been, um, has been constantly evolving. I didn't attend until uh, three years ago, 
but um, I've seen I've seen the pictures, I've seen the live streams, and I've just seen I've just seen everyone grow, and it's it's been an, an amazing experience. I think you were one of the youngest big buck hunters coming in and starting competing right as soon as you turned 18, right? I started competing as I turned of age, but I had been playing the game for nine years before that. It's really been amazing. I've been able to connect with these guys because um, we all share a passion for the game, and I think that's what connects us all. As we said, it's all about community, and as you can see on stage, during our game breaks here, we like to have a little bit of fun, so we've got Big Buck Hunter ring toss happening. I'm going to shut up and let you guys watch the action. That's adorable. Way to go, everybody. Thanks for playing. We'll be back with more games later on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, a, a wonderful stacked weekend here with a hell of a lot of great content, but one of the highlights of that content is going to be Big Buck Skull Island. Let's take a look. Raw Thrills takes the virtual reality experience to the next level with King Kong of Skull Island VR. The three interactive, action-packed episodes keep players coming back over and over again. Use your hands to naturally interact with King Kong's world like never before. Control your destiny and continue through each amazing episode. Ultimate VR graphics with 4K HP Reverb 2 headsets that include a two-year warranty. Experience dazzling 3D visual effects using dual HP supercomputers. Raw Thrill's VR experience is unlike any other on the market with the Air Ride motion system that provides maximum excitement and proven reliability and the Air Force Air Jet System for intense speed and special effects. Stay safe with protective face mask and wipe dispensers built into the cabinet. Instantly attract players with both 55 inch and 43 inch LED HD showcase monitors. The 
ultimate virtual reality action adventure is here now. King Kong of Skull Island VR. So you might have seen that contact your distributor there. We will give a very, very, very big shout out to Betson Enterprises. They come together every single year to put on this event. It is not an easy event to execute. So we know it takes a lot of time and energy to plan this out. And I think I speak for the entire Big Buck and Play Mechanics team when we say this could not happen without you. So Betson Enterprises, a big shout out and big thank you. Let's take a look here at the bracket here, just a recap of those round one matches. Obviously, Gary Holt here taking the win over Mick, one of the most recent matches we saw. Dave Schaefer absolutely dominating Jared Erlins and Chris Freem finding himself into round two. And ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna be jumping into round two here in just a minute or two. Players are starting to come on stage for a major matchup. But on the topic of major matchup, Lorik still sitting at number one. Lorik's dominating, all right? Absolutely, Listen, there's cleaning house. Cleaning house, and it's it's pretty close. That's about a 50, 60 point difference between Lorik and Triceratops, who if that's a live view, I don't know if it is live, you know, it's a replay, so I take that back. You see Triceratops actually on screen right there, so I don't know if they've used their five tries, but that's how it works. We have five entries, two of those entries are free, the other three are a dollar, you enter big, Bucks with a Z, big bucks with a Z at the end instead of an S. That's how you enter into the tournament for win $5,000. So I'm curious if Lorik's score is just not going to improve then for the rest of the tournament. I don't think it will, that's right? what I'm saying. Yeah. So anyone who enters now from home for free has the opportunity to come in, take over that top spot, that's right. and walk home with five Gs. Yeah. It's, it's not, not bad. Not a bad situation. 42,000 is the score to beat, and you got 19 hours to do it. Looking pretty good here as we, speaking of looking good, just a little, this little view into one of the Big Buck models. By the way, Callum, you told me that you were actually in the office when the Big Buck models auditioned to be in the game. Is that true? Uh, no, not when they auditioned to be in the game, but uh, yeah. It's, when they it's, came it's, in. It's a unique, it's a whole unique world. You know, it's funny because there was a couple years ago where we actually had uh, the, the Big Buck Ladies Tournament, right? And, and at all the events, it was Big Buck Models, and it was Big Buck Models, and it was Big Buck Models. And we said, hey, the ladies need some love, too. <laughs> and so now we have Big Buck Hunks. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. That's and how so it should be. It was, it was funny because a couple of years ago, we actually had Dave Snipes was on stage, and, and Travis Pastrana and all them were there. And, and they went up with a pair of scissors, and Dave was wearing jeans, and he goes, this is, I look way too formal next to all of you. And so he asked for scissors, and then on stage, all in front of the whole crowd, no just way. cut his jeans into, into short shorts. Jean shorts. Yeah, it was, that it was, it was absolutely amazing. wonderful. The, the birth of the Big Buck Hunk. I will gladly sign up to be a Big Buck, Big Buck Hunk. Meanwhile, we had a great matchup. Tim Am versus Melinda Van Humison, who, by the way, is not just a dominant ladies bracket player, has also placed top 10, top 15 in the World Championships in the overall bracket as well. Let's jump in. Yeah, Melinda is a, a scary person to go up against, but Tim Am says, hey, I don't give a damn who you are. I'm sending you to the reload bracket if I can here. Tim picks up five wow. bucks of his own. Melinda, not, uh, not starting out the way she'd like, but there is plenty of time to still come back. Melinda Van Humesen known around the block here as being one of those fierce, fierce, fierce competitors. So I wouldn't count her out just yet. One site down. Absolutely not. Melinda got 15th place at the World Championship in 2019, took home $800. We'll see what she can do here, bouncing back. Look at the ferocity, the intensity. As we jump into site number two. Oh, Tim! Tim's gonna go out. This is a huge opportunity. Melinda just wants to take her time here, get as many points as she can, and rack up as many bucks as she can. Off to a decent start, but misses a few count. This is what we were saying, though. You know, once you hit that one yeah. dough out, everything changes. Melinda just needs to take her time. She didn't pick up as much as she'd like, only managed to score three, but this is the squirrely white-tailed deer that I was telling you about, right? They hop, they jump, they bounce. They're very tricky animals to do exceptionally well on. Tim M, no excuse for going out there. He took a long shot, it was a risk, didn't work out for him. That's right, opportunity for Melinda. She didn't necessarily capitalize as much as she would have wanted to. But still, narrows that gap, about 1,500 points right now, which is manageable, Cal. Absolutely, it absolutely is. See that first shot just to scare the Melinda. Uh, Not what she wants to see. Tim takes all the time in the world, hopefully able to pick up six of his own here. Six of his own here. Melinda being a good competitor, steps back, gives him all the space in the world, says, hey, this is your time. That's right, that's a good job at Tim capitalizing there. That's going to be a significant lead. Not even closed over yet, though. We still have three sites left, or sorry, two sites left, an opportunity for Linda to bring this one back. 
Lund, of course, from Vancouver, Washington, placed fifth in the 2018 World Championships. We'll see what she can do here playing alongside her husband, who's also in, in, uh, in the competition. Yep, Scott Van Hoomison. Everyone knows the Van Hooms, you know? They're the mom and pops of the Big Buck community, <laughs> without a doubt. Uh, hailing out of the Pacific Northwest, they have been here for There's a minute. One. Bow round now, Tim starts out strong. Melinda struggling here. That's Tim is uh, Tim showing up to play, and I think he might be a rookie, he's a rookie. Right? Yeah, he's showing up well. Honestly, Tim might be a dark horse in this tournament. I like what I'm seeing so far. Connects for five bucks right there, and at this point, you might think it's all about over. Tim's running away with this one. So a rookie beating quite the vet in Melinda. Yeah, you know, and, and, and again, like, there's there's players you don't want to go up against. Yeah. Melinda Van is one of those, but hey, Tim is saying, hey, it doesn't matter who you are. I'm here to play. I want that money. $20,000 for first place. That's right. From Arnold, Maryland, plays at the Pink Galleon Bar. Not a part of any hunting crew. He's a solo dolo. He's hey. like, I'm just here to, to ride myself to the top here. And, and he's, he's, doing, uh, he's doing his thing. He's coming in. Melinda's had uh, a little bit of a tough round. She's doed out twice already, which is uh, pretty uncharacteristic, I think, for Melinda. Um, but you know what? It happens to the best of us. The beauty of it is you know wow. she's going to take this and reset and say, hey, it's not the end of the world. We're good. 5,000 points, that's uh, probably too much of a gap going yeah. into the bonus game, especially with how Tim's been shooting. But as I said, Melinda's going to find herself in that reload bracket. She's going to turn around and say, hey, I got tomorrow. That's right. I come in fierce tomorrow, and I can still do this. Yeah, she just dominated that last round, though. I don't even know if Tim got out. I don't think he did. I think that was just Melinda. Clean sweep, 6 nothing, but a little too, little too late. Going into this bonus round, it's maybe just a consolation round, as we think Tim should have enough to wrap this one up. Yeah, like you said, Melinda's been here before. She knows how to bounce back in those reload rounds. Right, and I mean, you can attest to this probably better than anyone, especially in this venue. Those nerves when you're on stage. Yeah. Right, those, those, that intimidation when you're playing in these intense matchups, especially those matches where you're like, hey, I don't know you, but you're good, you know? Yeah, honestly, look at Melinda now, not missing shots over Tim in the bonus round. And I think if you run this back, or if this is a best of three, three treks, I think Melinda might win this one, to be honest. And to your point, those nerves, that first round jitter, second round jitter, you know, maybe coming out here for Melinda as she is going to dominate the bonus round. But again, too little too late, I believe, and that'll just verify. But nothing but love here for the new rookie. Congratulations to Tim advancing through, coming from Arnold, Maryland. Takes his beer as well. You got to grab it. Drinks coming out of the cup holder. I love it. <laughs> I, I, I'm so curious to find out, and I hope, I hope Omar, when he gets on the floor later on, uh, we find out if these rookies know who these vets are, right? Yeah. Does Tim know who he just beat? <laughs> or is that just another player on stage to him, right? That's true. Because that's a massive upset. Rookie against Melinda Van Humesen, like that's not a small feat. By any means. Not at all. Yeah, congratulations to the rook, Tim. We'll see what he can do. That was round two, right? That was, we're in round two. Wow, so Tim just advanced to round three. All, Rookie making some noise. All of these matchups that we're gonna be watching this round are going to be like neck and neck, big guns. Yep. Like, it's, we're gonna start seeing big names falling. That's right, the tournament's only gonna get better and better, by the way, as we're gonna, of course, run through the winner's bracket today. The reload bracket, well, that starts tomorrow. So if you lost already, Melinda, go have some fun. Enjoy your Friday night in Chicago, because you're obviously not gonna be complete, competing again until, I believe, after 12 o'clock, the doors open tomorrow. Yeah, doors open at 12, show starts at two, and the tournament goes till seven, so don't party too hard, <laughs> not too hard. If you're partying so hard that you're not awake by 12 o'clock, <laughs> you had a wild <laughs> night in Chicago, which honestly, I wouldn't doubt some of these players here are gonna have a good time. If you're watching and not, have never attended Attended a world championship. It's a great time, as you can tell, as we're jumping into gameplay here on screen. Yep, we've got Sarah Erlinson and Amy Green here on game number two. We're going to be jumping into the action with them. We do see Sarah Doe, or sorry, not Sarah, Amy Green does out pretty early in the site. Um, Sarah loves it, lives in it, and <laughs> captures 2,600 points of her own. That's a great start for Sarah. We talked about it earlier. Sarah and Jared Erlinson, both from Wisconsin. Sarah, arguably the better competitor, now a mother. She actually submitted her picture with her newborn child. Congratulations to the Erlinson family, if you're watching right There's now. One. From Beltonville, Wisconsin, and Sarah, a fierce competitor, has been doing it for a very long time, but Amy's showing some life. Yeah, and you know, as, as we, we talk about Melinda Van Hoosen, it's, it's funny because it's one of these names, or two of these names, that you don't talk about one without the other, right? Melinda Van Hoosen, Sarah Erlinson, neck and neck for years, after years and years and years. And it was only recently, Historic names. it was only recently we started seeing new names popping up wow. in the ladies' tourney, right? Then we started seeing Melissa Romanek come in and, and win it. We saw Lauren Hope come in and win it. So it's it's interesting. As I said in the pre-show, you know, I am excited to see the the women come in here and 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 hopefully take this whole championship. There, I don't believe has ever been 
a world championship winner that wasn't a man. So if this is the year that we break that, that'd be awesome. I will be through the through the roof. Agre ag agreed. Exactly. And the year that we actually combined the brackets, decided no longer we can have a ladies bracket and a world championship bracket, which can combine it all into one. And of course, there's still going to be a ladies division winner that's going to take home a few thousand dollars. The best placing female player will, will win that ladies division championship. But nonetheless, excited to see here. And if there's anyone, it might be Sarah. Sarah's off to a good start. She struggles with the bows, though. If there's any downside, it's going to be that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it shoots a little differently, it does, right? Yeah. So you've got to lead your shot. You've got to take a little bit more time. And so if, if you're going into that, and, and we heard Sarah interviewing with Omar earlier, and she straight up was like, I haven't played bow. Like, that was that was new to me, you know? Yep. Uh, and, and so the fact that she was able to brush it off and get that dust off her shoulders and say, hey, I want to I want to win this. I want to take home that cash Yep. Uh, is, is exceptional. That's, yeah, it's beyond impressive. We're seeing here, they're going into the final site of this trek. Reload. And it's still neck and neck. Sarah Erlinson's only up by about 1,500 points. Wow. So this genuinely could go any way. Amy Green, if she puts up a big round here, she could be finding herself in a really good position in the bonus game. She does have three. She gets the deep shot, so that wow. might be enough points to put oh her back gosh. on the board a little bit. And it is. That yep. is a close game. This is going to be a game that's determined by the bonus round. Absolutely. Sarah, of course, has a pretty good advantage. So as long as Sarah ties this bonus round, she's chilling. But we'll see what Amy can do. Amy's got a clean house here in this bonus round with this one. It all comes down to this final bonus. And this is a tough bonus. This is, the, I mean, it's the salmon bonus, right? It's, it is speed. But if you get off that rhythm just a little bit, you're falling apart. So right. Amy Green, Sarah Erlinson going into the bonus round here on game number two. It all comes down to this. We can jump back into gameplay. That would be great. And we have stage number two. If not, we'll try and call the action for y'all as much as we can. Hard to see on our small monitor. I, th I think it's neck and neck. They're both gunning for it as aggressively as they can. We're sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that we are not on screen here. But Sarah sounds to be down by just a little bit. Amy Green has herself a little bit of a lead, so this could go either way. I can hear our stage host giving it a rip and a roar. They're both clapping and hugging it out. Oh. It looks like it's a tie, so Sarah Erlinson walks home with it. Yeah, Sarah wins 22 to 21 in the bonus round. Sorry we missed that, y'all, on stream. <laughs> Look at her face. Yeah, she knows relieved. it. She knows how just she just skated by with relieved. that one. Yeah, that's she the one word. She just skated by with Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Congratulations to Sarah, making it to winner's bracket round three. That is significant opportunity here for Sarah to keep rolling. And this is what I love about the winners the later on you get into the tournament, because these rounds are starting to get so much closer. If we can bring up a leaderboard here, Philip Upre, Melissa Romanek, neck and neck. And Melissa might have won her second match. She's going up against Philip Upre right now on nice. game number one. But you can see it on your That's screen. Huge. These scores are getting closer, and they will continue to get closer throughout the tournament because the names and the players and the experience is just there. Yeah, and right now, Melissa over Philip Dupre. That is a massive upset. Melissa getting double eliminated last tournament. She comes into this tournament and is currently beating second place runner up from the last championship. Right. That is a huge potential upset, 12K to 10K right now. And it's funny when we talk about this because, like, you're absolutely right. This is a massive upset in this situation. Philip Dupre got second place at the championship last year. Melissa got double limped. But it's not like Melissa's not been in this yeah. situation before, right? Absolutely. She won the ladies' championship a couple of years ago. So you're absolutely right. It's a massive upset. But like, I feel like we're going to see so many massive upsets throughout this tournament that it genuinely can go either way. And that's, that's right. one of the coolest things about watching this game and being a part of this competition is it can genuinely go any direction. That's right. Welcome to the Big Buck Hunter World Championship, ladies and gentlemen. It's been fun to watch. By the way, quick correction, doors are at 1 o'clock tomorrow for those that are watching online and planning to come. Doors open at 1 p.m. If you live in the Chicagoland area, if you live in the Midwest, start driving right now. Actually, if you live anywhere in the country, start driving right now. If you live in the Midwest, you can leave early in the morning. If you're from Ohio or Wisconsin or anywhere nearby, make it on over to Big Buck World Championship. It's a free entry, all you can play games. We don't just have Big Buck, we got Minecraft Dungeons, we got Halo Fire Team Raven, which is featured in David Buster's by playing mechanics as well. We got a ton of games. It's been a ton of fun. It's a party all weekend long. Yep, we have the self project or self portrait project downstairs. So if you're here with friends, go and take some photos and make some memories. That's right. Bets and Enterprises, obviously we thank them earlier for getting yep. all the games out here. They've been a, a, an exceptional partner of Play Mechanics for ages. And and talking about partners, let's highlight the new one, skills. Man, five thousand dollars on the line in the mobile app. That's right, insane. Five grand, make sure to sign up by downloading the mobile app on iOS Play Store, Samsung Galaxy Store, bigbuck.com, sorry, skills.com slash bigbuckhunter. There you have it, Lorik still on top. 
waiting 19 hours to win that $5,000 tournament. We'll, of course, keep you all updated on that front. But speaking of updates, we got a big one here. We got Nicole Erickson versus Andre Rivas, the right. winner of the 2019 World Championship, coming up in round number two after, after this. Yep, and this is not someone we've seen on the action uh, yet today. Before we go down with uh, Andre Rivas and Nicole Erickson, we have Omar down on the floor. Now, I do have, we have two trivia questions for you, Omar, before you start. What is the capital of Canada? <laughs> and what is the population of Canada? You wow. Um, you know what? I'm not going to make the mistake of giving you that answer. You're going to have to find it for yourself, Callum. We all obviously know the answer to that question. Um, I'm sorry that you don't. But for right now, I have David Selman here uh, with me who, all right, there's two interesting things. One, you had a first round bye, so that's a new experience. But also, tell me about who you're facing next right now. I'm facing Sarah Erlinson in my next match. Uh, multiple time ladies champion. I think she's the the highest placing uh, lady in the main tournament as well. So a lot of pressure on for that one. But I've been practicing with some pretty good people this year. So I'm feeling like it's possible. No, of course, of course. I know you've been practicing. You've dominated that, that first round. Uh, but I was talking to Sarah early, earlier. She's missed the past few years because you know, she's be busy being a mom or something, you know, not important like that. But now she says she is ready. How do you feel knowing that she's apparently more hungry than ever? Uh, it, it definitely isn't comforting to hear that she's uh, back on her game, so to speak. But I, I've had the opportunity to practice with Chris and Andre a ton, the number one seed and the reigning world champion. So that, that is a boost of confidence knowing that I can take them down. It's head to head, so anyone can lose. I love it. Well, I can't wait to watch. Based on that first round, I think you're going to be in good shape. Uh, but you. best of luck to you, guys. I'm going to send it back to you. And look up uh, those population answers of Canada, Callum. Uh, I think it'll help you out. <laughs> what a oh, cop out. He's so so politically correct the way he he's, navigated he's that question. Clearly, he's been here before. He has some experience. And I do want to emphasize, there's he doesn't know. He has no like, idea. There's no chance he knows. He has no idea. Absolute facts. Too funny as we we're jumping back into gameplay. We got Cesar Garcia versus Mike Byrne. It's a close one, Cal. Last we checked, it was 4.5k to 3k. Mike has the lead. Right, and Cesar Garcia is uh, that, that rookie that we were talking about. Mike Byrne been around the block, been here for a long time. Just a couple thousand points. Anyone's game still. Going on into their fourth site out of five. Just a reminder for those of you watching at home, the way this tournament works, That's you one. have a full-on trek, so it is five sites, one or two of those being the bow, and then you have a bonus game with a 2.5 multiplier on it. That's right, Mike Burns going to dough out here. That opens things up for Cesar. Meanwhile, let's jump over to game two because we have Andre Rivas. You have to show him on screen, the reigning world champion on display for the first time heading into the bonus round, yeah, playing against Nicole Erickson. He's putting on a dominating performance. Going into the bonus game, there's really not much that Nicole can do here. Uh, we've had some pretty exciting matches this round. Elena Bolanas falls to Stuart Stovall. Andre Rivas, as we can obviously see here, putting on a, a, a dominant performance. He's going to be taking the win here over Nicole Erickson. Patrick Keelan takes the win over Alex Tonneson. And Cesar Garcia and Mike Byrne going neck and neck still. Uh, if we jump back to game number four here after this bonus game. And then Jamie Rundle versus Kevin Deers, also neck and neck. Game number four, game number five. If you're watching at home, you can tune in to BigBuckHunter.com and catch any of these five games happening in real time. That's right, it's being wished. Let's jump right back to game number two here. Mike Byrne, 10K. Cesar Garcia, 8K right now in winner's bracket round two. Cesar, I believe, from Austin, Texas. Mike Byrne, tasty little biscuit from Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's, a, that's his gamer tag. It's not my nickname for him, by the way. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, currently running away with it. If Cesar can go huge here in the bonus round, can still win it, needs to go big, though. And look, if, awesome Cesar, if Cesar performs here, he can win it. He's only down 2,000 points. It is a, a, a big difference. And, and going against someone like Mike Byrne, you're probably not going to make all those points that you need to make. But hey, if Cesar can do it, there's a spot in the winner's round for him next, uh, next after this. Yeah, he's connecting. He had a little bit of a lead there, but Mike's doing a good job just narrowing that gap. As long as Mike is within 5-6 Salmon here, he will walk away with the win. It looks like Mike's going to be able to do that. He's actually going to take the lead and finishes with style. Congratulations to Mike Byrne advancing through the winner's bracket round three, third place uh, placement in the World Championship in 2015. I'm going to put money down. I'm going to put money down right now that never in your esports career have you thought to say, or thought you would say, <laughs> This guy's only down five or six salmon. <laughs> Never Still in my has life. the opportunity to come back. Never in my life would I have thought I would have said that. 
It's probably one of the best one-liners I think I've had in esports, though. I, uh, I gotta say, it's fun commentating Big Buck. I've been a fan of Big Buck since I was 13 years old, playing at Yorktown Mall here in, uh, in Lombard, Illinois. Just t five, ten minutes away from Play Mechanics, yeah. the studio in Glen Ellen, where you had a chance to work, actually. Yep. What was it like working with Play Mechanics? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, that was my first job in the gaming industry, uh, and it is different. It's fantastic, right? I mean, I, everyone who works in the gaming industry will say, you know, you, you love it. It's a grind. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's cool working around so many creative people, so many people with so much experience who are passionate about arcade games, right? Like, people often, I think, say, like, hey, arcade's a dying industry, right? Like, yeah. people aren't going to arcades anymore. Like, you go to Play Mechanics and you're like, oh, no. It's very much alive, right? They're constantly churning out new games. They're working on pinballs. They're working on mobile app. Like, it is a completely new world out there. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's been fun to watch and fun to see Play Mechanics over the years evolve and grow. And obviously, Big Buck Hunter, big significant part of why Play Mechanics has been so successful. But now they have Minecraft Dungeons cabinets. Yep. They're partnering with Microsoft and Xbox for Halo, yep. Fireteam, Raven. Yep. Terminator obviously has been a big hit of theirs as well. They pretty much dominate the arcade industry, which is really, really cool. And it's awesome to see the arcade industry still still alive and well. Right. And, and it's kicking. I mean, you, you look at these family entertainment centers, Dave and Buster's, like, you got places like that. Those are packed, right? Those are packed on any given day. But yeah. That's right. Talking about packs, we've got our stage filling up on game number three, Matthew Garber against Jacqueline Stafford. Uh, we've got Alexis Murphy and Dennis Whitechurch on game number four, Trevor Gartner, Stephen Mosier, Nicole White, Ray Upshaw, Drew Baldock, and Stephen Sponsor. This round is stacked. Stacked like well, pancakes, baby. But we are going to start on game number three. It is neck and neck. And when I say neck and neck, three points between the two. Jacqueline Stafford is up by three points. Wow. Insane. That's a great one. We're going to jump right into it. Jacqueline Stafford versus Matthew Garver, game number three. And as Callum said earlier, go to BigBuckHunter.com. You can see all streams if you want to watch your family or friends. But look at Jacqueline. Off to a great start here, completely dominating this site. Make it four. Can she connect for the fifth? Can she go for the clean sweep? No. Matthew's going to connect for one. He actually gets the last two bucks here. And just like that, Matthew stays alive. But Jacqueline does a good job narrowing that gap. Only 500 points advantage, though, because Matt got some great long-distance shots there. These two have been... Uh You've been showing up to competitions for a long time, both of them, right? This is going to continue to get more and more and more intense as we drive through this winner's bracket. We are in winner's round number two. I believe we're going to be seeing up through winner's three or four tonight. Uh, so these matches are just going to get more and more intense. Matthew Garber fires back, starts with two of his own. Jacqueline picks up the deep shots, though. Does manage to put a couple points on the board, and she does. Managed to get the final shot on Lucky Buck number four. There you go, Jacqueline. Really heating up here in these last two rounds. And you see the, cheer, the fans are cheering for her here. They obviously want to see their girl Jacqueline go big. She's been competing for a long time. 12th place is her best finish, and that was at the World Championship in 2019. Coming from New York, part of the New York crew at Pine Box. So she has great competition that she plays against in a lot of those guys, Andy Linico. Yep, this is uh, the whole New York crew, and her, her husband, uh, Sean Stafford, is also in the competition. Yeah. So Matthew goes out. Matthew's oh. uh, an experienced shooter himself, I believe. He actually uh, is a pretty big shooter down in Texas. Uh, so this is... Uh, Jacqueline running away with it is not necessarily something I would have anticipated, wow. but I'm not surprised. Hey, Jacqueline's been grinding, all right? You know, we're two years later, a pandemic later, and Jacqueline Laurubia doing a great job here playing out of her mind That's in this winner's bracket There's round two one. matchup. And obviously, unless she really messes up royally here, which she's not doing on this bow round, she's connecting for great shots. I think Jacqueline's going away with this one, Cal. Yeah, Jacqueline is... Uh, comfortably running wow. away with it. Again, as I said, it's it's not surprising, but it wasn't expected, if that makes sense, yeah. right? Like, you, you think two names like this are gonna be neck and neck every single time they play. Like, if this is a best of three, I would anticipate it goes down to the final round, right? But Jacqueline says, not today. I'm going home, or I'm going home with 20K. I'm going for the next round. I'm comfy, I'm good. So Jacqueline leads 5,000 points in the bonus game. We're gonna send it over to game number four, Alexis Murphy and Dennis Whitechurch. Again, if you want to catch all of these matches, you can tune in to BigBuckHunter.com, where we have all five games being streamed in real time. So if you have family or friends you want to make sure you're watching and we're not tuning in, do not hesitate to check that out. And at the same time, we'll do our best to jump to as many matches as we possibly can. You called it Matt Garver from Texas. He's a ranch manager in Texas. That is not an occupation you see all the time. He's been competing for a long time, second place in the Big Buck World Championship in 2014. But let's jump into Lexus Murphy and Dennis Whitchurch, two competitors that have been doing this for a while as well, Cal. 
Yeah, Dennis finds himself a dugout. Alexis is going to be able to use this opportunity to put all five left remaining on the board. She does manage to do exactly that and the Dangerous Trophy. This is a big point round. Can she get the final shot? She does. That is going to close this gap massively. When I, we're talking before that round, 4,000 points, give or take, separated those two. After that round, we are talking 500 points. Wow. This is going to come down to the bonus game. Dennis, you're not in a comfortable position here. You don't get to walk away. Bonus. Winner of this bonus game is the one who is most likely to go on through the next round. Alexis from Atlanta, Georgia. First competitor we've seen from Georgia. She's made $1,500 in the target track winning, which is darn impressive. When I come down to this bonus round, like you said, it's neck and neck in overall points, I believe. Dennis currently getting slaughtered by Alexis. 8-2, but Dennis going to try and come back. Yeah, it's tough when you fall behind in these bonus games, you start to lose that rhythm, right? You start to, to miss shots. You've got to figure out where they're coming from next. And once you're on, you're on. Dennis does a good job here, recuperating just a little bit. Alexis up by eight. Dennis now firing, finding a couple of his own. But Alexis says, nope, we're sending you home. We're packing this bag up. We're putting the nails in the coffin. Alexis Murphy, I think, has done more than enough to come out on top wow. again. She was down 500 points going into that, and she ends up on top 1,000. So Alexis Murphy does find herself on to the next round. Wow. Round winners, round number three. What a matchup that was. Down going into the bonus round, and meanwhile, my man here is with all the swag in the world. Who, and you, know you might who, be wondering, who is that who is swagged that? out man going on stage? That is Jaron Anderson. He's going to be the next game we it. actually jump on board with. We got to watch that Jaron Anderson against Lauren Hope. Oh, baby. So it's going to be a nail biter. It'll be tense. It'll be a good match. You can see the New York crew getting excited, getting celebrated, so high right cheering now. each other on. Yeah, that's uh, Alexis obviously walking off stage. Big win. I'd love to get an interview if we can with Alexis at some point. But for now, we got to watch this main stage matchup. Lauren Hope, your reigning ladies champion from Regina, Saskatchewan, the province in Canada, not Regina, Regina, not whatever you butchered it and called it. Sus I don't even. Sus Saskatchewan. I, I've only called it correctly <laughs> my entire life. Just like you only correctly said the, the capital of Canada. Ottawa, obviously. Ottawa. <laughs> it's more than Omar knew, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Needed it. You know Omar's going to go and look it up, so the next time he, he comes on mic, he's going to Yeah, like, I know. I'm going to be so mad about that. And, uh, he's going to well come played. in with the specific number of how many people are in that country. That's right. That's right. That was well played. Kudos to Omar. And we're jumping into this one. It's going to be station number one. You see it on screen. This is going to be a great matchup. Again, Lauren Hope coming in as a heavy favorite, our female champion from 2019. And Jaron Anderson, talk about his background. Are you familiar with him? It's got to be comfortable. What is the, the, the shawl? shawl? Like that, right? Like that's got to be comfortable. Yeah. Or do you so. think it's more like a rug? I think it's. I think it's comfortable. You think it's comfortable? Yeah, for sure. I think it's definitely comfortable. Darren Anderson uh, coming out of New York against Lauren Hope here. Lauren again, the ladies champion from last year, uh, showing why she is the best on bow. She picks up five right out of the gate. Jaron manages to put up 595 points in retrospect. Wow. So Lauren starting out. Wrong. Yeah, Lauren's looking great. Meanwhile, Jaron, aka Gyro, filled out Gyro like a Euro. That's how they say Euro in, in New York, and it really upsets me. It's not a it's not a Gyro. It's a Euro. Uh, let me just clarify. He uh, listed his occupation. Well, it's murder, and his hunting fuel. Well, it's water, bro. Says Jared. This is. It, it is a unique community full of characters, That's and every right. single one of them is freaking awesome. That's right. Playing at the Bushwick Country Club alongside Andy. Meanwhile, site number two. Well, it's gonna be a better fair for Jaron Anderson, trying to neutralize a little bit, but Lauren's gonna continue to increase that lead by 2K. And look at Jaron, I think he's getting in her head right now. I don't know, you know, it's, it's friendly. Oh, I look. think they're just friends. Like, I think they're just hanging out. They're just having a good time. They're just shooting the shit and enjoying uh, being on stage, competing against each other. You for, know, Jaren, for hundred thousand dollars. Jaren's been here before. He knows who Lauren. Sure. Is, you know? yeah. Well, he knows that he's not up against some random competitor. He's Run. going up against Lauren Hope, the Nailed. ladies of the champion. There's yeah, Lauren's off a good start here. Look at this, four to one. And just like that, Lauren gonna connect for four. It's gonna be two in the favor of Jaren. Just like that, Lauren continues to advance her lead. She's looking great right now. Look, Lauren making Saskatchewan proud. Yeah, put him on the map. Literally. We have a map in front of us here. Just to be clear, I said that right, right? <laughs> As I'm saying it, I'm like, oh god. Now you're in your own head. You did say it right. Congratulations, brother. Beautiful. Yeah, well done. So one time during the show, I will say that word. <laughs> I will avoid it for the rest of the rest of the tournament. Yeah, you got it. He's like, one for one, I'm done. Hello, we'll call one. it from here. You Meanwhile, Lauren's not done. Hello, She's still slaying out right now. Great yeah. shots coming through from Lauren. Look at the domination Lauren, right now from the ladies from Regina. Lauren is just dominating. Yeah, that's right. Another four to two. 
sweep in every single game, especially in the trophy round. And that can also connects for the trophy. Lauren cannot miss right now. Yeah, and Lauren Hope is uh, continuing to build that lead up by 5,000. We're going to jump on over to game number two here. Aaron Morris against Kayla Geary. We've got two sites left. Well, one site and a bonus, I apologize, but 100 points between them. That's close. No dough outs throughout this entire tournament. It is neck and neck. Game number two, Aaron Morris against Kayla Geary. That's right. We're going to jump right into it. Close one. Lauren's going to run away with that one. Congratulations Cash's to her. Curse. Just like that. Cash is cursed. Indeed, Kayla is going to dough out here. Unfortunate occurrence of events. And just like that, Aaron's going to capitalize on five. Meanwhile, Living on a Prayer is playing. We're going buck wild. It is, uh, you know, that's not Bot the time. Baby. Not the time to dough out. Not at all. Going over to game number three. We're going to keep jumping around here over the course of the next. Actually, you know what? Pause. Game number five. I am sorry to do this to you, production crew. Game number five has Federico Reed playing against Andrew Mikolowski. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. So, I can't blame you for that. Yep, I'm okay. gonna I appreciate that. Mikolowski. I appreciate that. Mikolowski. 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 Federico Reed was behind at the start of this. Wow. He brought and he's it back. just started to come back. Look how close this is. Neck and neck, 8.2 to 8K right now. Federico Reed, aka Freed, well known in this community, beloved in this community. We'll see if he could stay alive here in the winner's bracket. Yeah, Federico down, I think, 200 points now. One site left in a bonus game. This is still anybody's game. Federico knows that his winner bracket journey is on the line here. Yeah. One to one. And he starts off. Gets the deep shots, though. These Wildebeest are falling left and right, and they are all green. Federico, that is not what you want to see. Yeah, Federico needed that round, and it's going to be Andy running away with it. That's a big, big. I think that was actually round five, if I remember correctly. So going into this bonus round here, Federico needs a miracle. Living on a prayer indeed right now is Federico. Well done. Thanks. Well done. That's pretty good, right? That's, that's a good one. Appreciate I, it. I appreciated that. I, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't hear it, we have the crowd singing Living on a Prayer behind <laughs> us down on the show floor as this tournament continues to get closer, closer, closer. Reload. Federico's dominating right now. Look at him. This is one of the most dominant bonus round performances I've ever seen. Federico from Massachusetts, I believe, going huge right now in the bonus round. Is it even enough though, Cal, or is he too far behind? I think he can do it. What is happening? I think he can absolutely do it. He's Aimbot down. Aimbot activated? He's down about 3,000 points, but I mean, this is about as low out as it can be. This is insane, Count. We have a 32 to 6, 30 to 33 to 8. Unbelievable showing from Frederico. Is that enough? I think he might know it. No way. Federico, oh 2000. No. No. Way. Damn. Federico lost by 20 points. We are talking one, one salmon. salmon. One, one critter. One more, sa one more salmon, one more critter, one literally any, a, a buck 10 meters further, anything. 20 wow. points. This wow. is what we were talking about though. Like these bonus games can come down to the absolute wire. And Federico did exactly what he needed to do there, right? He said, hey, I've got to, I've got to score big here if I'm going to stay in this. And he did. Wow. He scored big. And he fell just that short. Insane. That was honestly Un unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. Unlucky. And Federico goes huge. And that was honestly a valiant effort. My, my non-existent hat goes off to Federico right there for a dominant bonus round performance. But kudos to Andrew. He advances to winners back at round three. Federico, we'll see you in the reload round, buddy. Excited to see what you can do. Enjoy your night, by the way. When there are losers, there are winners, right? Indeed. Indeed. That's actually a great consolation prize, though, is uh, is the ability to, to finish and start drinking. But what were you Oh, saying? shucks, I lost. Now uh, I get to I go to the drink. bar. But uh, Chris Treso and Sean Stafford, another close match. Sh uh, Chris Treso picks it up by 400 points. So wow. Neck and neck. Also neck and neck. Skills leaderboard. Indeed. Indeed. Let's go ahead and take a look at our skills leaderboard here on screen. Lorik still has the lead. 19 hours left. Go ahead and play on your phone by downloading Big Buck Hunter Marksman. Enter the code Big Bucks with a Z to compete for $5,000 from home or live in the venue, your choice, on any platform of your choice on mobile as well. That's going to be it for Calum and I for now. We're going to go ahead and throw it back to Omar for another interview live on the stage. What's up, guys? All right, we've obviously been seeing a lot of great action, but some of that great action has been provided by uh, Jacqueline Stafford, who, before I ask you a question related to Big Buck Hunter, I got to come on down here just for a little bit, just for a little bit. Look at this. We have you. Look at this. They flip. You could go to rainbow to silver. Oh my 
my guess. But I choose the rainbow. So I'm going to ask you a little bit of a red carpet question here. Yeah. Who are you wearing and how? what is the inspiration behind your shoes? Well, to be honest, I wanted something that really caught the lights. And when I saw them, I was in Canada traveling and they were on the clearance rack. I was like, how could you not? How could you not buy these? So it's Doc Martens, by the way. Oh, of course. You mean Canada, the country with 38.01 million people whose capital is Ottawa. Of course, we all know the, the country of Canada. So tell me about how you've been feeling uh, out there. Uh, you've played now two rounds, if I'm not mistaken. You've got a third round coming up. How are you feeling with the pacing with this with this added and huge uh, tournament pool? I really like the, like, we're going through the winner's bracket first. Like, there's less lull in between. So I'm like, I feel like I'm keeping my momentum, which which is... Good for me now because it's paying off. Yeah. What's one? What's the one thing you tell yourself before you go out there and compete? Um, I go silent. I t I go silent. I don't hear anybody. I put in my one earbud. I put on a song. I don't listen to anything else. The silent killer, Jacqueline Stafford. Good luck to you. Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate. It. I'll keep an eye out for your sparkly shoes. Yeah. Well, cheers. The uh, mic and the. Uh... There we go. I think that works. I think thank that you, works. Thank you. I think. Callum. Back to you guys, both of you. Thanks so much, Omar. Is uh, wow, he really knew that answer to a T. I I called it the second we asked him earlier. I said he's going to look it up. There's no way he's not going to look it up. He's going to come in exactly with the number and the cap. And I, I think he just knew that on his own. He works for CNN. I'm Clearly, done. he's very cultured. Clearly, he's very I'm global. Done. Unlike you, I'm you done. only care about England, which is where you're from. <laughs> and the I can't States. even tell you the population of, of England. England. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> Dude, is Big Buck a thing in England and the UK? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. It, I think it's a, a global phenomenon, yeah, right? Is. But but I don't know if we have like a massive community, big massive competitive community over there in the UK, right? There's games. Yep. But then there's games, right? <laughs> We're seeing the games today. Yeah, absolute facts. Meanwhile, it's massive in Australia, massive in the United States. Heard it's blowing up in China as well, which is awesome to see in Asia. So a global presence for Big Buck. Meanwhile, we'll get to jump back into gameplay here. We got Lindsey Morris versus Jose Garcia on the close one. Yeah, neck and neck match here. 500 points separate the two. Again, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching from home, you can tune in to BigBuckHunter.com to see all five stage games, any of the matches happening live at any time. Do not hesitate to check that out. You won't have John and I's smooth, melodious, melod melodious? Mel oh, I like that. Melodic. 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 You wouldn't have our smooth, melodic voices, but. I like buttery. Buttery? Buttery commentary. It's buttery. Smooth like butter. I don't know if I. At well, least it's smooth. Butter smooth. Yeah, I mean, like, it makes sense. It just feels, I feel feels violated. Off. Chat, can you let us know some great words to explain our commentary? Positive words, hopefully. <laughs> I was going to say, we need to specify here, positive only, preferably. <laughs> Listen, this is a big buck community. We should, the big buck community shows love from what I've seen so far. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we, were, we were looking at this game number three here, Lindsey Morris against Jose M. Garcia. It was neck and neck a few minutes ago. Not so neck and neck anymore. Lindsay on fire. 11K to 7.2K. That was going into the bonus round here, and it looks like she'll uh, do a good job more than enough. Actually, 31 for Lindsay. It's going to be only 12 for Jose Garcia. Lindsay advances, whereas round three, but Jose, a little consolation woo. Yeah, so uh, with that downtime, we're going to jump to game number five. Dave Schaefer against William Hulkey. We have seen both of these players in the past. Dave Schaefer uh, more recently, about 20 minutes ago, and he put on an absolutely dominating performance That's over right. Jared Erlinson. Now, not necessarily following up with the same course. 5,000 to 2,600. Yeah, that's right. We'll see what can be done here. Let's jump in. This is Dave Schaefer, Bill Holtke, as you mentioned. And looks yeah. like it is Reload. currently William in the advantage, in the lead, but Dave can go big these last few sites. He's got a few more opportunities. Gonna dough out though right there. Now a good round for Dave. Uh, racking up the scores here. Someone pull the trigger and let us see them quicker. I don't have the patience for this. You see the bows and the arrows just jabbing in the side of these gems box. Yeah. Bill Hulkey here picks up four. Dave Schaefer manages to find two of his own. 4,000 points separate them with Dave Schaefer trailing behind William Hulkey. In case you're wondering, the Gemsbach are bulls and cows. I always mix that up. We call them bucks. It's, yeah, it's, Uniform. it's, it's just standard. Makes yeah. it easier. It makes it easier. Bucks versus, ducks versus does, but. You know, if you want to get technical, if Frederico's watching, he's going to be very technical. He will call us on it. There's no doubt in my mind. 100%. 100%. First shot goes There's off, hits that critter. Dave Schaefer finds the first. Second, can he do it on the third? It's a deep shot. He does find it. Long shot's in the back, but he takes a risky hit here. Dose out. Bill Hulkey will be able to tie it up. 
with a long shot of his own, so we're probably going to see a pretty even scoreboard on this site. Yeah, but the, on this site doesn't mean the overall leaderboards because Bill had a 4K advantage, and that advantage is going to continue to roll here. Making it a 6K advantage, it should be pretty much all she wrote. Bill's going to win this one, I think, unless something crazy happens to the bonus round. You no, know, you are... Uh, you are comfortably accurate there. We've got our new players jumping on stage. We're going to jump it over to one we haven't actually seen in action yet, Chris Freem, jumping on to game number three. Chris Freem versus Gary Holt. Yeah, Chris is an absolute freak of nature, a freak of nature, if you will. He's been here for a while, been competing for a while, been a top player for a while. We'll jump into that gameplay if we can here in a moment. Dave Schaefer, though, all right. Showing Fires some, back. Yeah, he Shows does. some life. He does, and actually, I thought that was they were going to the bonus round. That might be enough to narrow the gap, enough to give him some life in that bonus round. We'll see, Bill got one, and yeah, I think that might be a little bit of yeah, life. Yeah, like, uh, what, it's, uh, it's fourth about 4,000? So you're saying there's a tough. chance. So it's going to be like a... 30 to 0 bonus game for yeah. this to be uh, reasonable, and I'm, uh, I'm not optimistic. But Chris Freem, Gary Holt has now kicked off on game number three. We are one site down. Chris Freem starts off strong, 3,000 to 0. That looks like a dough out to me from Gary Holt. Yeah, that's right. Great job, great start for Chris. Continuing where he's left off over the years in back-to-back -back performances, consistent performances, always been a top player in the Big Buck community. We'll see what Chris can do here. We'll see it. His, his opposition, Gary, can do. Gary obviously barely, I think, won round one. I think, if I remember correctly, coming from Texas. We'll see if he can bounce back here in round number two. Yeah, Chris is a fierce competitor, but Gary does manage to pick up the deep shots. So that's going to be some beautiful points here. Lucky, 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 lucky. I don't know if you saw that, but Gary actually shot at a doe deep, thinking it was a buck, and just missed. Wow. And as soon as he missed, he goes, oh, shit. Aim somewhere else. Insane. This close to doing out. Absolutely insane. Chris, champion from the 2002 World Championships. Been, like we said, doing it for a long time. 2012. I said 2002. Yeah, it hasn't been going on for that long. 2012, <laughs> thank you. Can't talk. It's been a long day. Chris, obviously, a long time competitor here. Going into site number four and get a connect for a critter. Get a connect for a second buck. And here you go. We're neck and neck here. Two apiece. Long distance Ooh. shot from Chris. Look at the accuracy. That'll be enough to give him a, at least 800 to 900 points. It's going to be 1,200 points on that long distance buck. And Gary got lucky last round by missing that dough out. Just, uh, I would say, accidentally. Not so lucky this round. Does end up doughing out. Chris Freem building that lead up by 4,000 now going in. I believe we've got two sites left in a bonus game. So still room to come back. Like, it's not over yet. But Chris is, is he's, he's here to play. Yeah, he is. You know he's an old school competitor like Sarah Erlinson we saw earlier, who's more familiar on the gun. Well, Chris is showing, hey, I can, I can adjust, I can adapt to the bow. Adaptation clearly showing and connects wow. for the trophy. Chris is a freak. Those Chris were, Chris the Freak Freem, especially were, his new nickname. Those were accurate shots, they were fast shots, yeah. and they were scary shots. Gary, uh, unfortunately, does out there. And Chris Freem, the dream. Chris Freak the Freem. I don't even <laughs> know what to call him. He's just absolutely crushing it right now. Uh, nasty. That big buck. Great shots to put in. Going into that last and final site here. Has a significant lead. It's going to be a lead in the, in the uh, range of 7,000. Chris should be able to clean this one up here momentarily, unless Gary can have a huge game, and it looks like it's not going to happen. Chris is not letting it happen. No, we talked about this a little bit earlier on. You know, we saw a lot of doughouts in round one, and we said, hey, if people start doughing out in round two and round three and round four, it's going to be a end of their tournament journey. And Gary here just doughed out three times, I think, two or three times on these sites alone. Like, that is arguably, I mean, Chris, Chris played exceptionally well, but that's arguably the reason he lost. That's true. Shot himself in the foot right there. No pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> shot a doe in the foot right there. And here we go. Bonus round for Consolation. Well, it's going to be all Chris all day. 3-0 to zero right now to start. 4-0. to zero. He's going to get a clean sweep, imagine. We, we have a lot of uh, a lot of awesome matches here uh, that, that are yeah. wrapping up. So just to recap while this uh, bonus game here finishes, William Hulk, he does manage to pick up the win over Dave Schaefer going on to winner's round three. Isaac Shaw takes the win over Molly of Bruce. Jim Cleary falls to Matt Peterson, and Scott Gulix wins over Victoria Nicholas. So Chris Freeman and Gary Holt wrapping up the last matches on stage at this moment. And Gary, it's not looking good. Oh my god. Meanwhile, we just saw Chris do 36-7. We've had a lot of close bonus games, and we've now seen a few absolute slaughterhouse bonus games. Chris doing it right there. Chris is showing right now, in my opinion, a favorite to win it all. He's looking great. I, you know, I remember seeing a score from round one, and it was like 18,000 to 2,000. It's insane. 
this was 18,000 to 5,000. Wow. So, like, you, you might be right. Chris Freeman might be one of those people that we're going to see in the top four. Yeah, they grind it out. Listen, if $20,000 first place prize is at stake, you better believe these players have been practicing. They've been grinding at their local pub or local bar. Keep in mind, that's where they all qualified, right? Unless you have one at home. Is that, do you, can you qualify from a home cabinet? I believe you can. Uh, you couldn't when I was there. I don't know if that's okay, changed. Okay, maybe that's changed. Okay, maybe so, you cannot still. It, you may be able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, you go to your local pub, you go to your local bar, you qualify, and you have a community of players that you can play head-to-head -head against, you can practice against, which is great. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the recent matches here. There's that dominant performance we saw from Matt Peterson over Jim Clearly. Meanwhile, William Hulk over Dave Schaefer barely wins that 12K to 10K. Isaac Shaw versus Malaya Bruce and a few others on the leaderboard on display. Meanwhile, we see our lovely crowd here having a great time live from Chicago, Illinois at Joe's Live in Rosemont. If you have not been to Joe's Live, it is a great time. If you've not been to Rosemont, also a great time right by the airport. And what a great venue this has been for the World Championship. Right. We, we, we made a joke earlier about if you're anywhere in the country, drive out yeah. and be a part of this Leave event. Leave now. I don't think we realized or thought about it, but we're literally across the street from O'Hare. That's true. Fly in, actually. <laughs> I take it back. Probably Hop a hell of a lot easier. Anywhere in the country. You don't have to drive in. Come on in and fly. Yeah, hop on a plane. And you're literally a five-minute drive from where we're at right now. Joe's live in Rosemont. I hope you guys are enjoying the action at home. And, of course, if you're at home, you can also compete at the Big Buck Hunter Marksman Tournament. It's the mobile challenge presented by Skills, which is the mobile platform that powers Big Buck Hunter Marksman. Make sure to sign up for a chance to win $5,000. Yeah, and uh, looking at the leaderboard here now, we have Lorik still sitting in first with Triceratops in second. But, again, anyone, anyone can download this, take it home, uh, play on your phone and potentially earn five grand. You've got 19 hours left to enter. You've got free plays. All you've got to do is download the app, download the game, put in that match code, and put your highest scores up. That's right. And I uh, took a look behind me because I think we're taking a little bit of a break around. Some announcements going on. So we're going to jump to a very quick break. We're going to take a look at one of the cabinets we have here on display, also developed by Play Mechanics. It's the Minecraft Dungeons Arcade, which I played earlier. It's a ton of fun. Check it out. Big Buck Pro Championship, Esports Arena, Las Vegas. Who's ready to lay some bacata? We are here for the eighth annual edition of the Ladies Tourney. The competition is fierce tonight. And let's hear it for your champion.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Big Buck Hunter World Championships. This is the 14th annual championship. I'm Fallout, joined alongside Callum, longtime member of the Big Buck community, former community manager, esports program manager. You've done it all with this community. It's a pleasure to have you alongside me. Went around for a minute, yeah, but uh, not sure. as long as some of these players. Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome to see. 2010, 2008. <laughs> they've been doing this for 11 to 14 years now, which is crazy. It, it, it's it's crazy to see players constantly coming back, yeah. right? And and I can't blame them. There's a big prize at the end of the day. We're, yeah. we're talking a hundred thousand dollar prize pool. Are That's you right. kidding me? Insane amount of money at, at stake, and obviously a great party to come back for. It's a vacation. We were talking to a few folks from Portland earlier. They're staying till October 6th. They get to enjoy the very end of summertime in Chicago. Obviously a great time here. If you have never been to a Big Buck Championship event, would highly recommend it. We have players that fly out from Australia. We're talking thousands of dollars in, uh, in, in uh, airfare and hotel to make it out to this tournament. I would, as, as someone who has just moved away from Illinois, there's a few times of the year where it's like the perfect time to come out and visit, right? Yeah. It's either the end of summer or just before summer. Otherwise, it's like too cold, way too hot. <laughs> so I, I hope they are. I hope they enjoy it. I hope they're gonna have a great time. That's right. It's a good time to be here. That's for sure. And speaking of great times with great people, we got Omar Jimenez, the man himself, live on the floor with yet another interview. Omar, take it away. Yeah, John. So, all right, I got Nate Boyer here with me. How are you doing, guys? And I was looking for you, Nate, because, right. I mean, you are, you're a perennial veteran here. Yeah. Yeah, all right, exactly. so two questions for you. One, we're going into a pretty high-profile round here. Yeah. What absolutely. are you looking for um, and the people comp competing right now? Oh, yeah, put on those glasses. Right now, well, yeah, you know, I got, I got to put them on so I can see what's going on up here because I am a little bit blind. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm looking for my guy Andy White here to make a comeback against Kirby. Kirby here, he's from uh, Portland good shooter he's a video gamer but my guy Andy White here he's from Prescott a little bit south of us in uh, Wisconsin so that's my guy he comes up shoots around with me and Trevor uh, we have a good time well, who else we got up here uh, we got Dave Selman I mean who doesn't want to see the short shorts of Dave, Dave Selman he said tomorrow they're getting shorter so stay tuned for that I told them they should get shorter with each win. Now, one thing right. I want to ask you about is we got a lot of newcomers. You as a veteran, yeah. what is your advice to these newcomers to try and make an impact this first time around? Yeah, you know, you, you want to slow yourself down a little bit while still being fast. I, I realize it sounds like an oxymoron, but if you're too hyped and too fast when you're coming into it, you do out. You want to slow yourself down and you want to identify. You want to identify horns, you want to identify bucks instead. You know, it helps you because you go out, it's over, you know. Yeah. You, you've seen it. You've been here for years now, my oh, guy. Yeah. I was going to say to all the rookies, and yeah. before I send it back to you guys, John and Callum, you know it's good advice if it's coming from Wisconsin accent. Right? Absolutely. I mean, snipers are here ready I, to go. I, I hunt with the bow, so I mean, I wish I could do better at this than I do with my own bow. Of course. But hey, if you need if you need to come hunting in the Northwoods, you give us a holler. We'll, we'll show you where the big deer at. <laughs> Nate, always a pleasure, hey, man. Always, Omar. Uh, Callum, John, back to you guys. Love you, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. That was, one of the, that was one of the best things I've seen. I, I love Wisconsin accent. Seven beers in. I love every all. interview we've had today so far. I, the, I like I've still just got Andy Lynn and Alex Durho in That's my fantastic. mind. Just. Bah. That was awesome. Big shout out to Nate Boyer up in Wisconsin, inviting the entire Big Buck community to go bow hunting with him, apparently. Hey. Maybe we'll take him up on it. I would. You bow hunting? I, uh, I think it'd be fun. I'm I right. mean, I, they'd show up a good time, and then we go out to the, the Clyde's Corner and do the world's biggest beer bomb. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we can just grab a couple things off the bucket. Before we do, I want to jump to game number five. We have Melissa Romanek against Brian Contreras. Oh my gosh. Neck and neck, Melissa, who came into this and said, I just want to win one round. I'm happy to win one round. Now is in the lead in winner's round three, but only by 200 points. It all comes out of this. Whoever wins this bonus round by at least a few will likely win this game. Melissa started so strong as a 9-2. And and Brian's did a good job bouncing back. Yeah, and of course, the further you get in the winner's bracket, the easier your day becomes tomorrow. Now, there's some pros and cons to that. Yeah. You're coming in hot, you're coming in cold, you're playing against people that have warmed up for a few hours. Fortunately, there's a lot of games throughout the venue, so there is plenty of time to be able to get in early, get some games in. Melissa, though, skirts by with a lead. She wow. had 200 going into it. Melissa's going to find herself going to winner's four. And this is coming from the person who was like, I just want to win once. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's won three straight rounds. Congratulations to Melissa Romanik from St. Paul, Minnesota. Does a great job qualifying. A little wave as well, a little swag wave as she makes her way off the stage. Congratulations to her. She advances. She's a long time coming to these events. It's good to see her advance. Yeah, great, great, great for her. We do have some exciting matches coming up. We're going to recap really quick all the action that just happened on stage. Again, you can tune in to Big Buck, sorry, BigBuckHunter.com. 
to be able to catch any of these five stage games on uh, in real time. If you have friends who are competing, family are competing, whoever, and you just want to be able to jump between them all, BigBuckHunter.com, you can bring up any of the games in real time. John and I will continue casting all of the action here for you. Melissa Romanek takes the win. David Selman takes down Sarah Erlinson wow, by a couple good. thousand points. Chris Exberger does topple Tim M, who uh, just the round before this took down Melinda Van Humison. And then Andy White does topple his opponent, which, of course, Nate Boyer is going to be ecstatic about. <laughs> That's right. Meanwhile, we'll be uh, talking about Sarah being down by a couple thousand. This is the bonus round there. David's going to clean sweep this one in a very dominant fashion. And David will advance to winner's bracket round four. Congratulations to David. Sarah's been showing up well in the tournament. Yeah, and we, we saw him a few minutes ago, yeah, probably 20 minutes ago, in an interview with Omar. And he was saying, like, hey, I'm going up against Sarah Erlinson. Like, are you, like, that's going to be a tough match. I don't know if I'm, like, I don't know what I'm going to go into. Yeah. Like, and he just came out. Won by five or six thousand points. Yeah, he's humble, which you like to see. You know, some humble competition here. David's obviously someone that has been grinding. He said, "Hey, we got a really, really good crew playing at Busby's West in Los Angeles, California, coming all the way from the West Coast." Sounds like they got a good local crew, and that makes all the difference, right? When you have a strong local crew, you can compete against on a daily basis. He said he's been practicing. That makes that makes the difference. That helps you advance, right? You get a league together, you get a couple of crew together, and it's a good time, right? Hey, exactly. what do you want to do tonight? Let's just go to the bar and shoot some. Bucks, right? Have a couple beers, shoot some buck hunter. That's a that's a solid that's Friday a night if you ask me. Time, right? Exactly. Especially given the last year and a half we've had. You nailed it. So we are jumping on with Andre Rivas and Stuart Stobel here. Andre Rivas, last wow. World Championships World Champion, and he's struggling yeah. on this first sight. Trophy round. And uh, he's gonna get that one. That's a pretty big trophy for him. Keeps him alive, honestly. A pretty big way. 743 points. Only down by 2K, even though he actually lost five to one in Bucks there. Yeah, 2,500 points, or sorry, yeah, 2,500 points between these two. Stuart Stobel, Andre Rivas, 44,000, or sorry, 4,400 to 2,000. Andre Rivas has plenty of time to come back, a lot of time left in this. Again, what you're watching here is the Big Buck World Championship. Every single round here now has one full trek, which breaks down into five sites and a bonus game. So a lot of time for Andre to come back, but Stuart says, I'm not going to let it happen. Roberto Bucks still around here. Andre tied at two apiece. Close game here. And it's actually going to be, as we set a bow round, three to three. They're going to be a fully tied game. We'll see who gets uh, the upper hand points. It's going to be Andre. So Andre is slowly mitigating that, that gap, that deficit right now to Stewart. But Stewart is actually showing up in a big, big way against the former champion. Again, Stewart's best placing 61st. Wow. The year that Andre took first. Insane. I mean, this is a, a big skill discrepancy, but of course, we didn't have a world championship last year. We skipped on lucky number 13. So there's a lot of time for players like Stewart to come in and, and put in that work and practice. That's right. And that's you know, Stewart, part of the Austin, Texas, Rose Before Does crew, another uh, hunting party that grinds, plays, practices together. And he's certainly not a chump by any means. Look at this, 2.2K to 865. Count, we might see our first major, major upset here on the main stage. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, Andre might be uh, lucky that he walked away with 20 grand last year because it uh, is going to be tough coming out of the loser's yes. bracket. We've seen so many new faces come into this tournament this year. So many new uh, elements of competition that, you know, I still don't know who's going to win. We've seen upsets. You're right. This is probably the biggest one we've seen so far, seeing a world champion fall in winner's round three against someone who placed 61st in 2019. But hey, look at this. What a round from Andre. We spoke too soon, Callum, because oh it goes God. from a 4K deficit to only a few hundred. You see Andre nodding his head. He's feeling confident. He's feeling some swagger going into this bonus round. How many times have we said already today, anything Wait, can no, happen sight, at any point? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Insane. That's exactly what we mean. But look at that, Stuart punches right back. It's almost like a battle of the Titan battle of the heavyweights exchanging blows right now. First Stuart, then Andre, back to Stuart. He gets five bucks here and making Rams actually. That's gonna be a massive round. And again, it increases that lead quite a bit. So Andre needs to do something miraculous here. He goes from head nods to head shakes going into this final bonus round. Yeah, there were a couple points during that site that I think Andre could have locked it back in. There were a lot of deep shots that he didn't quite lock down, and Stewart just seemed to get that final shot just in time. Yeah, really brilliant analysis there. Here we go. Final bonus round. Stewart starting strong, looking to bury Andre Rivas, the reigning champion, but Andre says no, not yet. Six to four right now. Andre has the lead, but he has to win by at least 10 to 15. 
maybe 20 if he wants to win this. He wants to bring it back. Stewart did such a good job mitigating that. He stopped the bleeding. And just like that, I gotta say, I think the upset might be happening here. I think it's, it's been moving. I think it's coming. Yeah, this is uh, this is just about all but over 2,000, 3,000 points separate these two. Andre Rivas not managing to pick up a big enough lead here. He does suddenly Ooh. start to spread that gap a little bit, but whether or not he's going to be able to close out just as strong tells the rest of the tale. I think uh, Stuart Stovall is going to be finding himself in winner's round four after taking down the 2019 world champion. That's the lefty from Austin, Texas, playing for the go. That is huge. Meanwhile, we got Trevor Gardner on stream for the very first time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main stage. Currently down to Alexis Murphy in our final sight. Look at this, Alexis, with a huge potential upset of your own. We have just saw Andre Rubas, 2019 World Championship, fall in winner's round three. Now we might see Trevor Gartner, multi-time World Championship. We told him before this event that he was confident. You know, he said, I'm coming back, I'm winning it. But Alexis says, nah, I am. Look at this, three to three tied up. Alexis has a couple K points lead. Trevor again, similar situation as Andre. The 2019 champion defeated. Will the 2018 champion, Trevor Gardner, get defeated as well? Coming from Wisconsin, you saw him talking to his buddy, or Omar talking to Nate Boyer, his buddy, earlier. He has all the confidence in the world, Trevor, but right now, Alexis with a massive upset potential. The from Atlanta. Oh my god, I can feel the tension from the crowd floor. You could cut it with a knife right now. I am so confident that the New York crew is about to erupt in cheering because Alexis just took down Trevor Gardner in the winner's bracket. That is intense. The big bad wolf of the big buck hunter bracket has fallen to the reload bracket. Now, of course, he does have a second opportunity. He has the opportunity to come back tomorrow, but Alexis has to be sitting on cloud nine Absolutely. right now. Strut your stuff, girl. Walk off that stage of confidence. You're walking straight to your crew. Proud of you. What an upset in winner's round three, Alexis. Now, instantly, by beating Trevor Gardner, he has to become a favorite to win this tournament, Cal. Yeah, I would, I would comfortably say so. And that was a couple thousand points, right? That wasn't like it was a, a five or six point difference, right? Alexis came in and she performed. And you can see it. Everyone on the floor knows what that means, right? That was taking down the Goliath of Big Buck Hunter. Trevor Gardner's won three or four years out of the last, like, ten, right? Yeah. I mean, this guy is, and if he's not winning it, He's in the in the in the finals with you, or he's finishing third or finishing fourth. To lose in the winners round three is massive. Absolutely, and look at that. Nate's going to show some love. We like to see that from Boyer to Murphy. Nothing but love shown in this community. And I gotta say, at the end of the day, the best consolation after taking an L like that, if you're Trevor Gardner, you got your boy Boyer ready for, with the beer, with the brewski in hand. He's gonna be supplying. And you're gonna have a good time. Right? If, if I know Trevor like he's I do, up. I think Trevor is probably going to the bar, having a glass of water, and he's going, I'm gonna come back tomorrow. You think so? Scary. Not having a party. I, I think I think Trevor is ready to come back. I I don't think we've seen the last of him yet. I would be I would still be shocked if Trevor is not in the top ten tomorrow. It's crazy. Alexis Murphy, graphic designer, originally from Atlanta, Georgia, plays at a managed pub, part of the two drunk to buck hunting party with a upset of the ages. Yeah, I mean, that's the upset of the tournament so far. And it's great because we literally just said Andre Rivas got upset. We just saw the biggest upset of the tournament. And then, and then immediately up. Trevor Gartner goes down in the same heat. I mean, hey, that's incredible to me. But uh, speaking of incredible, Lauren Hope's going up against Andy Lynn on game number one. So we're going to send it back down to the stage. Andy Lynn going up against Lauren Hope. Lauren Hope sitting comfortably with about a 1,000, 1,500 point lead so far. Now this is the tell of two tales, right? We got Andy the New Yorker against Lauren the Saskatchewanian. That's made that up. I don't know if that's a thing. That is uh, two very di different geographies, very different climates playing against each other here. Andy versus Lauren. Lauren currently with the lead, 4.2K to 3K. It's a close one. These are two heavyweights. Yeah, and Lauren just doed out on that last side. I know uh, Durho said, you know, this is uh, this is Andy Lynn's year, so we'll see. It all starts here. If he can take down Lauren Hope. I, I believe it. You no, I believe it, that there is uh, there is hope. You nailed it. Oh, man, he's three. looking there's great so far. Three to three is currently where we're at. We're actually going to take a, actually, I think we stay in the game here. Yeah, we have a chance to talk to Lex Murphy in the interview after this, but we got to stick in this game. This is too good to walk away from. So let's continue to watch this one. We'll hopefully get an interview with Lex Murphy after this, but this is a great one. All right, and we're jumping into site number four. 2,000 points is all that separates these two Goliaths, Lauren Hope and Andy Lynn. Let's That's see one. what happens here. We are in There's the one. bow shot. Lauren Hope won. 
Andy Lin picks up two of his own. Lauren fires back, gets the deep shot, and in that same time, Andy Lin picks up his target on the right. 400 points separate them on that site. Just under 2,000 overall. We've got one site left and one bonus to go. That's right. So, this is big. If you're Andy right now, down by 2K, what's your strategy going into this last site count? You know, I'm... I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm changing my strategy right now because a dough out could happen. You know, there's there's a lot of things on the board. There's six targets and critters. Uh, I don't know if we've seen the dangerous game here yet, but uh, Andy Lynn just needs to do what he does. Lauren, same thing. Ooh, and as you say, Lauren does what she does best: hitting headshots, great accuracy with the bow from Lauren. Clearly, she's been putting in work with this new bow, new feature. First time we've seen a bow in a world championship, and it's paying off for Lauren here. A 3K advantage going into the bonus round. And there was a little bit of prioritization difference there. Uh, if you saw Andy Lynn shooting to the right, Lauren Hope shooting to the left. Lauren Hope prioritizing the deeper bucks, which gives her more points. Uh, Andy Lynn probably should have been prioritizing the right, uh, and then, and then, or sorry, prioritizing the left and then gunning for the right. Yeah. But it's it's tough when you're making mistakes like that against someone who is so fast and so good. You don't have time to make those decisions, you know? That's right. And Lawrence continues right where she left off here, 8-2. And you got to think it's all but over right now. Lauren with a big win against Andy and our ladies. For the first time, no individual ladies tournament. It is all one tournament. Why? Because this is gaming. This is eSports, and it's mind over muscle. It's one of the things I love about eSports, right? Mind over muscle. If you're bigger, faster, taller, doesn't even matter. Anyone can compete, and it's the most diverse and inclusive activity or sport, in my opinion, that yep. shows here in this tournament. No, I, I absolutely agree. Again, uh, one of the big changes this year, for those of you watching at home, we have men and women competing in the same bracket. There is no ladies night, there is no ladies tournament. It is just the world championship with 100 grand on the line. That's right, congratulations to Lauren Hope, Scott from showing up. And the New Yorker showing her some love as well. So they have it, big win right there coming through from Lauren Hope. We told you we had an interview ready. I believe it is still teed up and ready as we got my man Omar nodding his head, giving me the confirmation. Let's go ahead and throw it to Omar with an interview with Alexis Murphy. Yeah, John and Callum, you talk about the big wins that we've seen over the course of this winner's bracket, one of them coming from Alexis Murphy. So Alexis, you took down the most decorated big buck champ, at least in the first go around, but you also told me this was a revenge match. Tell me about that. Uh, Trevor, uh, he didn't knock me out, but I lost to Trevor in 2019, and it was the first time I got to play him face to face that I can remember, to be honest. But I lost that match, but it was the best match I played that entire tournament. So when I saw that I was matched up against him today, I was like, I had to, he under, underestimated me the first time, and I knew he wasn't going to underestimate me again. So I'm glad it worked out. When you were walking up there, you obviously had been thinking about it. What was going through your mind as you were stepping up to the box there? Oh, like real intense internal screaming, just full panic. <laughs> I just figured, I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm having a great time this year. It's been so long since I've seen everybody. It's like, if I lose to Trev, it's happened before and I was fine. So it's fine. <laughs> So next time, what I'm going to take away from that is next time we see Alexis Murphy compete, just know what's going through her head is real, intense, internal screaming. The whole time. Just, the whole time. Just yep. screaming. That is the mentality of a champion. Well, Alexis, congratulations. We'll be watching for you to see how you move forward and maybe face Trevor again later yeah. on. I mean, yeah, this is a, a little bit stressful, but also very much exciting. So hopefully I get to play Trevor again. That'd be awesome. In a full adventure. Exactly. Alexis. Great, great second round. And as I understand, Julianne, Julianne Jones, you had something to add? I'm having a great time! Woo! <laughs> yep, she's having a great time. And so were all of we. John, Callum, keep it cool up there. Great times indeed. Let the good times roll. Listen, that was next level energy right there from Julianne. I, I don't think I've left an interview so far like not laughing every time <laughs> it comes back to the desk. <laughs> Actually insane. Congratulations again to Alexis Murphy. Big time upset. And by the way, can we make that a thing? Real intense internal screaming. I feel like that's a psychology principle or something. Look, I, every time I see her on stage now, all <laughs> I'm going to be thinking in my mind is just, ah! Yeah, R-double-I-S. It's officially a thing as we're jumping into gameplay here. <laughs> we got, I think, is it Matt Peterson, Chris Freem? Yes, it, it is. is. We got to see Chris Freem on display again. Yeah, and this is, a, this is oh another gosh. Goliath matchup. You know, Chris Freem, Matt Peterson, both of them have performed well in the past. Both of them uh, have... have they're, they're no stranger to the stage. They're no stranger to the competition. We're in winner's round three, and it is close. Eh, not so close after that site. We've got about 3,500 points between <laughs> the two. Nonetheless, Chris Freem has been on a tear tonight so far. Both times he's won his rounds, he's won by, like, 
15,000 points. Which is insane, which is very impressive. Yeah, Chris, in my opinion, the favorite to win this tournament based on what I've seen in terms of pound for pound from performances. Chris has been playing out of his mind, life out, and showing. Well, Matt, Matt is showing some life here, though. Chris connects with a long range. That's going to be quite a few points. And that's going to be a close range for Matt. So in the end, that's going to be a 200-point advantage for Chris, which just grows that lead by another 4K. Look, one of the most important things, I think, when you're playing in a tournament like this is who's in your bracket, who's in your heats, who are you going to be playing up against, right? And we have seen Andre Rivas fall. We've seen Andy Lane fall. We've seen Durho fall. We've seen uh, Trevor Gartner fall. I think Lauren Hope's still good. If I recall, she won her last one. But the names that Chris Freem has to go against to be in the winner's finals, which get him that much closer, obviously, right? Yep. That list is shrinking every single time we get new players on stage. So we're, we're getting to the point where, like, saying, hey, I think this person has a chance of winning it. We're pretty ag like it's True. getting it's getting, it's getting closer. That that makes these matches so much more fun to watch, right? Obviously, round one you have high seeds versus low seeds. We're having a good time, we're drinking, but as you can as each round has passed, we've gotten more and more intense, and you're starting to see it That's in gameplay. We've seen upsets, we've seen all types of great things. Chris is making the bow work like clockwork right now. You Three nailed. straight Rams, not done yet. I'm I'm going to. Uh, I hope at some point we get an interview with Chris Freeman because I want to know. Did him having a, uh, he's got a newborn baby, he's got a new wife, uh, he's, he's, he just married a couple of years ago, I think during the pandemic. I'll have to show you the pictures because they literally went onto the Half Dome in Yosemite and took wedding photos. No like, way. It's incredible. That's awesome. Um, but my point being, I'm curious to know if him having a new kid and a wife is like, I got to win this 20K. We gotta take we gotta, we gotta start. We gotta start a college fund for this little <laughs> guy, you know? <laughs> All big buck cutter winnings going to the college fund. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, awesome. yeah. I don't know if that makes a difference. We just saw Bugsdale right there, Seaside. Now we're jumping in to UFO bonus round. Chris has a pretty significant lead, and we'll be able to close this one out. Looking so incredibly sharp right now. Winners back around three, that'll qualify over the winners round four. I don't know how far we're going today. Is it winners round four that we're going to? Yeah, through? so we're going to winners round four today. Okay. And then tomorrow we have the reload bracket pretty much all the way through. We'll start back up with winners uh, quarterfinals around five o'clock. So awesome. uh, tomorrow is going to be an interesting day. We're going to see a lot of these old, uh, older players, these veterans who have been struggling so far, yep. uh, fighting to stay alive. And we're going to see a lot of these players like Chris Ream or whoever may be winning these rounds. Uh, just kind of staying cold. That's true. That could really impact how this tournament plays out in the later half. Yeah, that's a good point. Luckily, there's so many. There you see Chris with a thumbs up. Congratulations to Chris. But luckily, there's so many cabinets, arcade cabinets, Big Buck Hunter stations all around. You can stay warm. There's a VIP lounge where they got two more. So very similar to what we had in our MLG events back in the day, or yep. pro events. You could go to the VIP lounge. You can go to the pro player lounge. You can stay warm. I think Chris is going to be doing that as much as he can. Big hugs, big celebrations coming through yep. as Chris advances to win his bracket round four. Yep, that's, I believe, it's hard to tell from the back with a mask on, but I believe that's his wife there. Oh, so awesome. uh, could probably, I think Chris came out and said he's like, I was shaky a little bit. Like, I saw his hands moving, awesome. like. Well, he's performing under pressure. That's for sure. I just, meanwhile, I just heard Jared on stage say, are you drunk? Now that is a, a, a freaking event you want to go to. And if you're not yet, you're probably you're, about to be because this is probably the only competition you will ever see a game of Flippy Cup being played on stage damn straight. during a game break. I love it. I love it. We got some Flippy Cup live in the venue. If you're not here live at the venue, make your way on over. We're live at Joe's Live in Rosemont, Chicago, Illinois, for the Big Buck Hunter World Championship. Doors open tomorrow at 1 o'clock, so make sure to head over here by 1230, 1245. It's here by 1 o'clock tomorrow. Meanwhile, we're going to jump to a quick break. We got an interview with Jacqueline Stafford. I'm not sure if it's live or if it's, I think it's going to be a, a. I think it's a, last year's. It's last year's interview with Jacqueline Stafford. All right, we're going to jump to that. We'll be back right after this. I'm Jacqueline Stafford from Brooklyn, New York. I run the league with my best friend, Alexis Murphy, who's another competitor. I felt like I should have had a gun last year, and I got it this year. I feel really good. I also feel really lucky because I came from behind every time. To be honest, today was all about just being here with all my friends. The money is nice, don't get me wrong. Everybody wants a, a cool G, but the gun is, I was like, I just want this gun on my wall. Well, you're obviously always nervous to go against the heavy hitters like Melinda. I lost to Lauren last year. She knocked me out. I got six last year, so she knocked me out. Uh, so I didn't want to go against Lauren. I didn't want to go against Melinda, but I went against Melinda. Julianne Jones is really fast, so I was kind of not wanting to go against her, but I did take her down today, so. I 
love playing the game. It's a lot of fun because you want to be the best, but I really enjoy all the friends I've made. But I have to say this year, they really did it up really nice. It looks really good this year. Well, you should come next year because even if you think that you're dusty and you don't have it in you, take it out the closet. You may actually be able to do it. I got fourth place. I did not expect it. Come and you will surprise yourself. Raw Thrills is bringing the iconic Nerf brand to arcades and FECs everywhere. This huge branded family-friendly redemption game will launch with a giant 65-inch LED display, two seated player positions, and massive collections potential. Nerf Arcade is a high adrenaline virtual shooting gallery that has been tailored for a mass audience of all ages. The game's target-rich environment is always active, so a player can join at any time. The default gameplay is 45 seconds per credit, but can be adjusted to best suit the location's needs. Nerf Arcade's two-seated player terminals can easily fit into any floor space. The three virtual representations of actual Nerf blasters and toys help make this one of the hottest and most highly recognizable games around. By scanning the QR code displayed at the conclusion of every game, players can share their scores on social media and also win prizes. The instant brand recognition, bright powerful LEDs, and huge screen give Nerf Arcade a mesmerizing presence in any location. Welcome back, everybody, to the Big Buck World Championship Fallout alongside Callum as we've been commentating and calling the action so far. Great times have been had, and Chris Freem is looking unreal. It's, it's, it's scary. It is. It is scary. I, I, you know, it's, it's fun. We, we talk about this crazy weekend every year where anything can happen, and we've seen some of the biggest names falling so early in the tournament. And, and I think I say this every year. I think it's pretty clear that I'm a Chris Freem fan, uh, but... <laughs> The, with the, the performance he's had so far. Yeah, and the way he's done it, too. Every single game, like you said, by 8, 10, 12K, he's been looking very, very good. Meanwhile, you got to put just as much respect on Alexis Murphy's name. Yep. Coming from Brooklyn, the New York crew, great community up there that grinds, that plays against each other. She's looking like a favorite as well. Yeah, I mean, taking down Trevor Gardner instantly makes you a favorite, right? Yeah, when you exactly. take down someone that good, you're immediately in the limelight. Everyone's watching you for the rest of the tournament. She won that round, and I think half of the venue went over and was just like, holy shit. Good job. Yeah, insane showing, insane performances from both of them. Those are kind of the two favorites. But obviously, Chris has been doing this for a very long time. We had a chance to catch up with Chris at a past tournament. Let's go ahead and take a look at some words of what Chris had to say at a past Big Buck World Hunter World Championship. I am here with Sean Chadwick and Chris Bream, our third and fourth place winners for our 2019 Big Buck World Championship. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what it was like. The championship was phenomenal. Pretty amazing. I didn't think I would be able to come back to this point. Every year, it's, it's so fun to see like who fin who makes it to the finals. It's gonna be somebody new, somebody different. A couple new guys getting up there to the finals. It's so cool. This is my seventh one of these now. I've been playing for like 12 years. I've been playing a lot. <laughs> you just put in the time, you're, it's gonna happen. 
Congrats, honestly. You deserve all of your winnings. Congratulations. I'm going to let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your event. Thank Thanks you again. Thank you. It's been great. And of course, we wish Sean was here live in, in person next year, buddy. We miss you. Meanwhile, he could be playing at home, I think, competing all the way from Australia at the Big Buck Hunter Marksman Challenge powered by Skills. It is the mobile game, mobile experience for Big Buck. You can download it on the iOS store, Samsung Galaxy store, or at skills.com slash Big Buck Hunter. And whoever gets first place by 4 p.m. tomorrow in the leaderboard, well, they will win $5,000, Callum. How do they enter? Yeah, it's, it's, it's easy. It is. It couldn't be easier. You quite literally just have to download the game on your phone. So go to the Apple store, the Samsung store, or the Android website, download the game, Big Buck Hunter Marksman. Go ahead and once you have that downloaded, put in the code Big Bucks as your match code. You've got 18 hours left to enter. You've got five plays. The first two are going to be free. The last three are going to be a dollar each. Uh, but of course, you can only just play those two free times if you need to. That's but right. at the end of the day, put up your highest score. It's a beautiful game. It runs smooth. We were playing it earlier. Uh, big fan of it. And if you walk home with that first place spot, five G's in your pocket. Insane. Not bad for a weekend of sitting in your living room, or maybe someone live at the venue has a chance to win playing some Big Buck as we take a look at our recent matches on screen here. You'll see the ones that we talked about earlier. Lindsey Morris beating Scott Gullix. That's a dominant performance from Lindsey. Great job from her. And these, these players will, of course, advance to winner's round four, which is going to get started here in a moment after Flippy Cup wraps up on stage. And speaking of which, we're going to jump to a very quick break as we, of course, have some players having some fun getting a little drunk here on stage. We'll be back right after this. It is so cool to see where this event started, where it was five years ago when, when I was working with the company, and, and where it is now. I, I've got to ask you, this is your first actual Big Buck. You've been a fan for, the, for ages. Give me your thoughts. Oh my gosh. One of the most unique experiences I've ever had a chance to experience in esports. And I mean that genuinely, right? You go to events, it's obviously competitive, it's a good time, there's some great communities that are built, but I've never seen Flippy Cup on stage. Alcohol provided at all stages, a VIP experience with food provided, competition in esports, arcade games. It is an awesome time. It is one of the most unique events in esports that I've had a chance to attend. I'm grateful to be here, and uh, I love it, man. I love every second of it. And, and I recall uh, before, before this started, you had a couple friends that showed up, and, and you guys were just kind of hanging out, checking out the venue, checking out the space. What did they think, right? Obviously, for people who aren't here for the championship, who aren't here for the competition, uh, talk to me about kind of you're just a, a casual walking down the street, yeah. right? What is this event to that? Yeah, and that's the thing. Anyone in Rosemont can walk in right now and can come experience it. That's the reality. So my, my buddy Tony comes in. He first, his first question is, can I compete? He wants to jump <laughs> in and compete. But trust me, you don't want to compete against these guys. I no. think uh, you want to get some practice in first. But they loved it. They thought it was really cool. And uh, they've obviously seen what I've been doing in esports for a while. And they like, hey, local event in Chicago, want to come check it out for myself for the first time. This is a great entry, a great first experience, and a great foray into esports because it's kind of a, a, a nice uh, introduction, right? You come in, very normal experience. You're drinking, you're having fun, you're playing games. It's kind of like going out in Rosemont on a Friday night. Oh, and there's an esports tournament going on at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I think I often describe it as like the best party you've never heard of, right? Yeah. Like if, if, you're, uh, if you're a big buck competitive player, we've had multiple people here even on interviews who are like, I just started playing it at my bar, and then I learned about it, and now I've got big buck tattoos, Crazy. right? Uh, and, and then you have people that, that come in off the street, and they're like, holy crap, this is amazing. Yeah. I, need to be, I need to play in this next year. Right. And then you get people who come here for vacation who are like, this is my time of the year where I get to go and reconnect with friends. Yeah. And, and, and again, like these people are close enough that they're family, right? And so this is that opportunity to say, hey, are you guys going to the Big Buck World Championship? Great. We'll see you guys there. You know? And you get to reconnect. 
Yeah, that's right. And again, if it wasn't for this championship, there'd be a bunch of local communities, but this giant national, international community with Australia, Canada coming through wouldn't have had a chance to meet, which is really, really cool. So big shot to Play Mechanics for hosting this every single year, investing. It's obviously a significant investment for them to make, $100,000 prize pool, plus this great venue, plus all the food and everything. And uh, the fact that they do that just because they know it's such a special moment for that community is awesome. Right, it is absolutely powerful, and, and even more so, it is supported by some pretty incredible partners. Yeah. Obviously, Betts and the self portrait Project downstairs are here, but most importantly, I think, is skills, right? We talked about the Marksman app, uh, Marksman game a little bit. We want to highlight that big buck hunter marksman is so cool sick it yeah. is so cool and you can walk away with five thousand dollars that's that's spot on we've been playing all morning all afternoon we've been enjoying the hell out of it hope you guys are enjoying it at home and again yeah you hit the nail on the head big thank you to skills our presenting sponsor for making this all possible alongside betson for providing all the cabinets and helping us set everything up here it's been a great experience thus far at the big buck world championship 2021 this is the 14th annual you saw that replay uh, and highlight package of the 2008 big buck world championship that was was the inaugural it was at a nightclub downtown called excalibur that no longer yep. exists that's all it's not even here not even here anymore i this is the part of the tournament i'm going to be honest with you that i start to hate because i don't know what i want to watch on game number one we have alexis murphy and drew baldock right so we've got new york and canada we've got jamie rundle and mike Byrne on game two andrew moskowitz and stuart stovall on game three Ooh. melissa romanik and david selman on four and andrew white and chris exberger on game five we i think have to follow alexis murphy's story here yeah so we're going to jump on game number one but if you are at home and watching and want to catch any of those other matches be sure to go to bigbuckhunter.com and you will be able to catch any of the five games happening on stage in real time Nail the head. Big shout out to the Big Buck and Play Mechanics team for putting together an awesome live stream viewer, multi stream viewer on the Big Buck website. And not only that, but you can go on the Big Buck website and you can check out the World Championship current matches. You can follow the bracket in real time. It's actually a technical feat what they were able to do. I've never seen anything like this, to be honest with you, that ties into the game itself and updates the tournament bracket online in real time. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's kind of revolutionary, right? Yeah. Because you see all these tournaments and you have like an A and a B screen. You got one. Now you have an A, a B, a C, a D, and a B screen. Got it. Wow. Drew is off to a great start here. Off a great shot. You great nailed critter, it. Uh, bonus season to get on. You got it. Bonus. But Alexis, going to show some life. There's some long range bucks here. Here comes the Vicky's trophy, and it's going to be picked up by Drew as well. A great start for Drew, but only a 700 point advantage. Alexis is keeping it close. Actually, about a 1,000 point advantage. Yeah, these matches are going to be neck and neck. Alexis Murphy, obviously, out of that New York crew, has a lot of people to party with and get better and practice with. And then Drew Balduck, you start to say, OK, well, who do you have to practice against? Only Lauren Hope. <laughs> Only the ladies champion from uh, the last world championship. There's one. So, uh, again, I think this is uh, yeah. going to be a neck and neck match. Alexis one. Murphy fires back, picks up Reload. two of her own. Can she get the deep shots? A lot of missed shots here. Drew does manage to pick it up, does Reload. get the deep shots. And Alexis managed to tie it up three to three. So, not a massive discrepancy here. 500 points on that site. But again, any point difference is beneficial for Drew here. Yeah, slowly. That lead is starting to grow. That deficit is increasing for Alexa. So she needs a big site number three here. Two both sites, I think. Can you see, you see two both sites in a row there? Oh my gosh, we got three both sites here. Luck of the yeah. draw. This is, uh, again, Bo, for, for those of you who are That's watching one. these are the uh, really arrows low. you're seeing getting out across this the street. This is a Bo yeah. round, too. You have to hit headshots. You know, they make it look easy, one. but let me tell you, I tried for about an hour and a half playing this game and hit maybe three zombie headshots with a gun. Bo's even harder. These players are so talented, it's insane. And Drew is showing by Saskatchewan, playing from Boston Pizza and Regina South is on top right now. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, we're still neck and neck. You know, I don't yeah. even want to say we're falling behind if you're Alexis Murphy here. You're still, you're still easily attainable. There's two sides left and a bonus game. One doe out from Drew Baldock totally changes this. There's Again, one. a doe out from Alexis Murphy That's does one. exactly the same. We're back Got on the it. bow hunter with Drew starting yeah. too strong. Alexis fires back, one of her own. Can she finish it up? Got it and tie it, she does. And she's doing a good job mitigating the damage, right? Stopping the bleeding, but again, because Drew has just inched and inched and inched away each round, he has the lead and he's been able to maintain. But what I love about Alexis' play style here, by just keeping it close, she's giving herself a chance in the bonus round. And it really is going to come down to these last two sites, right? Yeah. So the site and the bonus game. If, if Alexis can perform well here, she has an opportunity to come back in the bonus. If she doesn't do it one. here, this you bonus game is going to be stressful for yeah, her. Yeah, Drew's off to a great start. Alexis needs this. This is the moment. This is the opportunity. And Alexis is going to connect for a headshot no, cross map. No. Oh, Drew goes out. Uh, Just like that, Alexis. Oh, no. Alexis goes out as well. 
That was a perfect chance for Alexis to tie things up. Oh. And they both go out, they both, which means, for those that are maybe new, if you hit a doe, you're out, that's it, no more shots. And it happens to both of them. That is absolute worst case scenario if you're Alexis Murphy. That is exactly what you need. Hey, we need to close this gap. We need to get a little bit closer. Your competitor does out on the final site. That is your window to make points. For Alexis to go out right then, that is painful to see. And Drew now is looking great in his bonus round as well. Heartbreaking final site for Alexis. And I think it's gonna be all she wrote. Congratulations to Drew Baldock. Regina, Saskatchewan, province up in Canada, advances to winner's bracket round five, which must be the quarters or semi-final? It's quarters. Is it quarters? Yeah. Wow. It's Impressive. quarters. So, again, it's, it's more names falling down, right? That's Alexis right. Murphy takes down Trevor Gartner, uh, did the rest of the winner's bracket a favor, uh, and then before falling herself. So, Drew Baldock's going to find himself moving on. Jamie Rundle also looking like he's going to pick up the win over Mike Byrne. Andrew Moskowitz, who's placed third? Uh, and, and had a hell of a performance in 2019, I believe yeah. it was. So Andrew Moskowitz is still kicking strong. He takes down Stuart Stovall. Melissa Romanik does find herself falling, but hey, four rounds later than she thought she was going to. That's right, and there's a close one too. David Selman, 8.5K, Melissa Romanik, 7.5. So that's right. a point difference. And now Andrew White does, uh, does manage to take the win over Chris Exberger. So this is where it's going to get interesting, because tomorrow when we go into the loser's bracket, we have Andre Rivas. Yep. We've got Melissa Romanik. We've got Alexis Murphy. We've dropped Trevor Gartner. I mean, we have some big guns. Melinda Van Humesen, who went out early in the tournament. Like, we have some big guns who are playing out of the loser's bracket tomorrow. That yeah. is tough. That's a stacked reload bracket, that is for sure. It's going to be fun to watch. And of course, we're going to grind through that reload bracket. The winners, well, they can sleep in, they can relax, they can yep. warm up, they can do whatever they want because that reload bracket obviously has to play out. We're starting in loser's bracket or reload bracket round number one. Yep. It's about eight to 12 to 15 rounds of loser's bracket. So it's going to be a grind. It is going to be a day tomorrow. We've got a lot of action ahead of us tomorrow. We're, uh, we're starting to wind down on the action tonight. We've got the rest of round four. Uh, I think we've got some great matches coming up. We're going right. to jump on game number two, William Hulkey against Chris Freem. Oh, that's a great we, one. We've talked about him a few times today. We, we're both optimistic that he's got it in him. Uh, we've got the last three games of the night they've just called on the stage. So we've got William Hulkey against Chris Freem. We've got Lauren Hope against Aaron Morris. And we've got Andrew Mikulowski. Close enough. That's tough. And, that's close and enough. Lindsay Morris. We're yeah, going to have right. to find Omar and ask. In the person. official pronunciations. Yeah. Omar needs to do an interview and find out and that find last out. name for us. Or just Omar knows everything. You know, clearly he's just a walking just encyclopedia. Call him, just call him up here. Exactly. Because he knew the Canadian thing, so yeah. he'll, he'll know exactly how to pronounce that last name on his own. Yeah, he knew exactly it. Exactly right. Yeah, he knew it. As, uh, speaking of Omar, Mr. Man that knows it all, let's go ahead and throw it down. And he's got an interview with our residential Canadian from Regina. Go ahead, Omar. <laughs> you pronounced it great, and Drew will be happy to hear that. They said Regina the right way uh, for you. Um, and so, Drew, uh, you obviously just won, and you've been playing great. Um, but I want to take the attention away from you for just a second, where you've got Lauren competing right now. What is it like watching someone that you care about compete, knowing that you might have to face them down the line? So, m more stressful than playing myself. So <laughs> it's actually nice to watch her like even the last match where we, we played the same levels and I was like, oh, why didn't I play it like that? So she picks up everything that uh, she sees and she plays a lot better than I do. So it's nice to just enjoy watching her win. And we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of dual Buck Hunter world class households. What is it like in you all's household knowing that either of you at any moment could beat each other? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that it's a 50-50, but uh, I try and keep up. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. Like some people don't have people of that caliber to play against, so to have Lauren there to you know put me in my place all the time is that's good motivation to keep playing better and play more and put my time in. Of course, Drew. Congratulations to yeah. you. Yeah, we'll uh, we're keep an eye on Lauren right now, as I know you guys uh, will too. Cal, John, back to you guys. Thanks so much, Omar. Great to get some perspective from a man from Canada. So. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to be uh, quick on the action here. We're going to jump to game yeah, number we two. It. We are in the last three matches of the day. Chris Freem going up against William Hulkey. Chris Freem here holding about a 2,000-point lead. Wow, great start. We've been talking about it. We've been hyping him up. Well, for good reason. Look at the advantage he has right now over William, a.k.a. Bill Hulkey. And if we can, there's so many great matches here, right? Lauren Hope is dominating Aaron Morris right now, 6.1K to 2K. And we got Lindsey Morris playing against Andrew Mikulajowski. Mikulajowski? Mikulajowski? 
Miko, Andrew Miko, and currently 3.9 to 2.7. Yeah, Chris Green starts out this site strong, gets the deep oh, jobs. Is he going to get the one on the right as well? It just There's dunks behind one. the tree. Bill Holke picks up the first and second of his own. Doesn't manage to tie it up. Chris Freem takes it four to two on that site. Great job by Chris. A lot of bow action here in round four is what we've seen. We saw it last round with, with Lex Murphy. We've seen it again here. As we're heading into yet another round. Bill Hokey currently down by about 3K. Needs to go big in these last two sites. We'll see what he can do. Yeah, and Actually, we're going to and we're going to stick with this. But Lauren Hope seems to be That's running one. away with it over Aaron Morris, There's Lindsay one. Morris, and Andrew Miko There's staying another. neck and neck. But for now, yeah. Chris Freem, William Hokey, can Freem's dream stay as real as possible? And will he find himself going to Winter Quarter Finals tomorrow? And it's looking like it. Up 9K to 5K. Chris is running away with it right now. Meanwhile, we talked about it. And Lauren playing so well. Our Canadians are showing up in this tournament, Cal. And Drew Baldock still winning tomorrow. So we're going to winner's quarters tomorrow. And we have Drew and Lauren. Volcano bonus. That is. We don't know if they're playing each other. We'll find out if we can in the bracket. I hope not. That'd be tragic. But nonetheless, Canada, what's up? Showing up big time here. Bonus round. Chris looking so incredibly sharp. And Callum's freaking out right now because it will be Lauren Ho playing against Drew Baldock if she wins, if she closes out in the quarterfinals tomorrow. That is Ooh. tragic. Not where I want to be if yeah. I am Drew. That is going to be an awkward hotel room tonight. <laughs> That's right. Awkward playing right home as well. No, but they all obviously have a lot of love for each other. Hopefully one of the two of them can win the entire tournament and, and represent Canada. I don't know if the Canadians ever won before, have they? No, wow. not not the world championship. Not no, the world championship. Wow. It'd be a first. We'll see if it can happen. Chris Freem's trying to say otherwise, though. Chris from Minneapolis, Minnesota, looking so sharp right now. And I got to keep my my prediction here. The fact that Chris in winners back around four just won 13k to 6k over William Holkey says so much about him. He is showing up this weekend. Right, and we said it earlier. You know, he, every single round he plays, he seems like he's just 18,000, 15,000, yeah. 16,000. Like he's putting up big scores, and to go and put those kind of numbers up. This late in the tournament? <laughs> scary. Yeah. That's scary. That's scary indeed. That's damn impressive for Chris Freem. He's looking so incredibly sharp. So the stage is set up. We can pull up a bracket again, Callum. We'll walk you all through it. I don't think we have a bracket graphic, so we will walk you through it verbally at least. In the quarterfinals, we're going to have Lauren Hope playing against her Canadian fellow. Meanwhile, we got Andrew White versus David Selman. We've seen David looking from Los Angeles looking great. We got Andrew Markowitz. Moskowitz. Moskowitz, thank you. Small text, you can zoom in a little bit. My man. Versus Jamie Rundle. I mean, haven't watched any of Jamie so far. We got Drew Baldock versus Lauren Hope, which we mentioned. And Lindsay Morris versus Chris Freem. Lindsay won her matchup. She advances, we'll play against Chris Freem. And this is exciting because Chris Freem, Lindsay Morris, whoever wins that is going to go against the winner of Drew Baldock and Lauren Hope, wow. right? And I think, like, on the winner's side of the bracket, in my mind, I'm thinking Drew Baldock, Lauren Hope, Chris Freem, Andrew Moskowitz. Like, those are my four that are still in this remaining bracket. Like, not to say that it, it's anyone's yeah. game, right? I mean, everyone that's made it to winner's round four is, is putting on a hell of a show. And we still have the reload bracket. So anyone coming out of the reload bracket, I mean, this is still anyone's tournament by yep. any means. Yep. But, but by, uh, I'm looking at those four. I'm looking at Moskowitz. I'm looking at Lauren Hope. I'm looking at Drew Baldock. And I'm looking at Chris Freem. Yeah, you know, I want to throw David Selvin's name in there as well. Because I was, was impressed by David's preparation for this event, his interview. He seems like he's been, he's been grinding. He seems like he's been prepared. And I want to see what David can do as we are now joined back with my man himself, Omar, on the desk here. It's been a hell of a day. Great action. What's been a highlight for you so far? Oh, my God. I mean, getting to talk to all these people. And, I mean, you see the competitive spirit. But to, to go behind the curtain, you learn about the internal screams, uh, <laughs> which I, I think I'm gonna, I might adopt. Yeah, I mean, really it seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if it works for Alexis Murphy, like it, it might work for Omar Jimenez. So yeah. we'll keep that in mind. I mean, but also talking to, I mean, you just mentioned him. Uh, David, I mean, from LA, he's coming in. He just told me he basically beat the previous ladies tournament champions trying to get to the point where he is in now. So he's felt like he's had a tough road. Yep. And knowing that going into day two, I mean, we'll see see what that brings, if it's momentum or if, he, if he's used everything he's got on day one. Yeah, he's got to be feeling confident. Meanwhile, for some of our Titans that are now going to be yeah. in the reload bracket, walk me through some of the big names to look out for tomorrow on reload. Yeah, I mean, we have Melinda Van Humesen in the reload. We have Trevor Gartner in the reload. We have Andre Rivas in the reload. I mean, and, and after this round of winners tomorrow, we're going to have even more names in the reload that are scared 
scary to play against. So it's going to be interesting. One of the things we talked about, Omar, is the fact that you've got people coming in, and they're going to be playing from 2 in the afternoon for the rest of the day. And then you've got people who are going to be coming in and coming in at 3 or 4 in the afternoon and saying, hey, I'm, I'm in winner's 4. Like, I don't start till 3. I'm good. I can go out late tonight. I can, you know? <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious to know how the ability to warm up tomorrow is going to factor in. Well, and that's, that's the thing where we, we I was forget exactly who I was asking about this, but they were talking about the pace of play and how they really liked in the winner's bracket. You could just kind of go in one after the next and get into a rhythm. Tomorrow, it'll be interesting to see if some of those later people don't get the chance to get into the rhythm earlier on. And for those that start early, they have the marathon ahead of them. So I think there's going to be a lot of factors that, they're, that are going to be different than years past, especially with the expanded pool. Yeah, that's a good point. I want to elaborate on that, right? And so many times in any eSport, I don't care what title it is, Big Buck all the way to you know Valorant to competitive games, going into, being in that reload bracket or that loser's bracket gives you a chance to catch fire, right? You yeah. can start heating up, you can start warming up. My best tournament I actually ever played in second place, the MLG Anaheim tournament 2009, we actually got double eliminated, got sent to the loser's bracket, because back then that's how it worked. It got sent to the loser's bracket and had to play 14 straight matches. We started oh at 9 a.m., finished at 1 a.m., ended up making all the way to the championship and ended up uh, getting second place in the tournament. So by all means, it's possible. You can grind your way through, you can get some practice, and you can bounce back in that reload yeah. bracket. And, 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 it, and this is a rhythm game, right? It's speed, obviously it's accuracy, but there's a rhythm to it, right? When you when you miss that one duh, or buck and you dough out, or you miss that one critter or, or one target in a bonus game, it all can fall apart instantly and we've seen it happen tonight right like someone falls a little bit behind and then it just snowballs yep. and one of the things that's gonna be interesting too this is gonna become a mental game very soon it's clear everybody here can shoot everybody here can play when you get into those final moments the money is actually on the line and you are like i have been here for 48 hours straight played i don't know remember how many people yep. it comes down to that one trek or yep. at some point in adventure absolutely so a lot of super serious competition stuff we've been talking about. Meanwhile, what a freaking blast today, oh guys. Oh, my gosh. That was insane. Some of those interviews, <laughs> I, we were literally dying laughing. My highlight of the day, hands down, Andy Lynn in that interview, stealing the mic, by the way, and, yeah. and, and giving his version of the uh, F, yeah, or F. You know, I don't know, are we allowed to, I don't know if we're allowed to swear. I yeah, look, look, no one no one really knows the rules, and I think that's, that's <laughs> part of this. You just kind of do whatever comes to your heart. That's right. And what was tough about, you know, that first round, Alex Durho and Andy Lynn, they're, they're friends that go back for a long time. And you guys were mentioning the matchup of uh, Drew Baldock and, and Lauren Hope coming up. These matchups, everybody knows everybody, you know? It, it, it's like high school fights and then everybody goes to class right yeah. after, you know? So there is a, a sense of competition, but also camaraderie amongst a lot of people. And so it makes these events so much fun. And yeah. I think you see that. When they come and talk to me, it's easy. It is. In my day job, no one wants to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> everybody here loves talking to me and, and it's great. Look, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think we've ever had a world championship that has been summarized so well than in the interviews we've seen on the floor today. It's internal <laughs> screamings, yep. it's F-bombs, it's slowing down the game. Like, I mean, every interview we've had seems to just summarize exactly what you're going to see this weekend. <laughs> it's yeah. cutting to Julianne Jones saying, I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's all, all of that. things combined <laughs> into one event, and that is the Big Buck World Championship. It has been a blast so far in day number one. It's just day number one. We got championship Saturday tomorrow. We got the reload bracket grinding all the way through. We got more interviews. We got more drinking games on stage. We got yep. more of this man, Oscar, or Omar Oscar. Omar Jimenez <laughs> himself. Good. We got my man, Cal. Callum Fletcher, who's been killing it on the mic the entire time. I'm half myself. I'm Fallout alongside Callum Omar. It's been a great day of Big Buck action. Tomorrow will be insane, and trust me, you will not want to miss it. We will catch you tomorrow. Doors open at 1 o'clock. Live stream will start shortly after that. See you then, everybody. Have a good night.